Greetings, family. This is Bomani Tayemba, and welcome to our Liberia and Morocco Journey of a Lifetime, March 29th to April 9th, 2024. Uh, so, family, what we're going to do is uh, we're literally 15 days away. Uh, today's date is March 14th. I'm literally looking at it, and uh, we're literally this that close. Uh, so right now we're in the process of this wrapping and finalizing certain things. So we have our confirmed group and uh, we have our two hosts on here, which is uh, Winnie Ahmed and well, our college genesis was on here and his name would say Dwayne McCalla. Uh So once you get back in, um, you can also introduce himself and we're just going to go over all of the tour information. Uh I'll be leading you on this journey, but I'm depending on my two hosts uh, who are experts in Liberia to uh, guide us along the way. And then we also have uh, tour guides uh, that's going to be you know, sharing the different uh, historical and cultural aspects of uh, the tour itself. Um, and uh, the sequence may be different um, on some days. So me and Wayne has been uh, working on this journey the last few months to this give it a nice final touch-ups and things like that to make sure that we have the best experience in Liberia. And she's going to go more into our introduction of Liberia and this uh, kind of just getting things open in your mind for the country. Uh, that way you could be clear about uh, when you get to the country. And then we're going to go over uh, preparation details, things that uh, you may need to bring, pack, or carry. And then we just open things up for questions. So definitely wanted to hear more from everyone as time go along. All right, so family, this is our 18th year doing our Africa for the Africans tours. And this is uh, my 20th year traveling to the African continent. Uh, started off in uh, Senegal and the Gambia, or I should say Senegal in uh, March 2004. And then I went to uh, Egypt in April of uh, 2004. So that was my initial energy into Africa. And um, one of the things that I did uh, on the first time is you know, I brought a camcorder and brought a camera and just like what we have done today, let's take a whole lot of pictures and videos and started this building them into what we would call more of, you know, you know, more of your documentaries and your films. And so what you see on YouTube is, uh, you know, basically 20 years of this evolution of this. You know, some of the things, uh, some of the previous uh, videos are not on YouTube, but uh, the Egypt one of 2004 is. And so it goes back that far as far as documentation. So that's what we're looking to do in Liberia, we're looking to document a great experience um, and just make it a nice uh, combination of things. This, uh, this is a design as a roots and culture tour, but uh, when you look at the itinerary, all you see is incredible resorts. Uh, so me and Winnie has been working on it to make sure we have the best resorts for everyone so you can really enjoy one of the most incredible coasts uh, lying in Africa, the Liberia coast where you know, you're talking about tropical, beautiful beaches. So we'll spend the majority of time in the country on literary resorts on the coast only time that we won't be on resorts on the coast is when we're in monrovia in the city itself and uh that's uh two days but outside of that uh it's uh just a great um itinerary so one of the things i want everyone to understand i just want you, uh this is a great chance to relax a lot more um especially if you have traveled me on previous journeys where you see the schedule packed so as time go along you make certain adjustments and this is the perfect country to make certain adjustments so some of the days uh, may not be as long as what you think it may be. So we're looking to kind of keep things mild to it. You even leave at nine o'clock in the morning and get back at three, four uh, in the afternoon, evening. So, and then you spend more of your time on the resorts, uh, these expensive resorts to just enjoy the peace of mind and then socialize with other people and then do a whole lot of networking. So so it's, uh, it's uh, that uh, incredible journey. And so we just keep on, looking at the itinerary, looking at the, the flow of things uh, to where we can just give it that perfection. So right now I'm literally working on the tour book and looking to this at a nice schedule sequence in there to where it's a nice introduction guidebook and introduce you to our host and the things that we're going to be doing. So that's a book that uh, once I'm finished, I will send everyone the digital version. And the main thing about the book, um, as we get ready to get into the itinerary, is the book uh, gives you the updated itinerary uh, with all of the details also. So it's a part of this, when you travel, just make sure you open your book, look at the itinerary, and also to see what we're doing. Uh, our goal is always to tell you what we're doing uh, the next few days once we're on the return to the hotel and also to tell you the same thing in the morning. Uh, so we will go over the schedule, but if you wanna be clear about what we're talking about, 
Uh, the flow is in the book and it's on the website to a, where most of what we put together as far as schedule is exactly what you see. Uh, and it's, uh, it's you know something you perfect over a period of time uh, as you schedule things in place and then you work to this, put them in place. So this is a, a journey where my good brother, uh, which I'll introduce him uh, shortly before we start the itinerary, uh, Dwayne McCalla, um, and uh, some of you may see us on our live shows where we talk about Liberia, talk about other things, uh, but that's the energy what we're doing. We're working together with different people so we can make you know make a stronger, more organized connection in Africa. So my good brother uh, Dwayne McCalla is the reason why we're going to Liberia. He is the one that I've talked with me about Liberia over the years, and uh, definitely so the last two years, and uh, he has introduced me to the person who's our tour operator and our other host, uh, Winnie Ahmed. Uh, so that's our two energy from uh, you know, Liberia one from uh, two Liberian energy that uh, is going to make sure that every the tone is set and uh, we'll be able to just have what we always talk about the journey of a lifetime. Uh, so and the, the main thing I want to tell everyone before we even move forward also is uh, take this as an opportunity to just enjoy paradise and take it as an opportunity to learn and open your mind up as far as business and investment. Um, I'm always telling everyone, don't rush into any moves or anything. And then you do, you have two of our hosts here, uh, Kala and uh, Wayne, where if you have something that you want to, you know, you're not sure about and you want to do in a country, because uh, I don't have that, uh, I don't have that experience in the country. Uh, you know, you have your direct connection immediately where you can run things by. And honestly, if more people have done that over the period of time, we'd have saved a lot of people. But usually people call us when the damage is done. And I don't know if Kala and uh, Winnie want to be um, damage control experts, but they rather do preventive maintenance where we get people clear about what we're doing and what we're getting into. That way, you know, if you're planning for the future, you can plan with an open mind and you have the right tools in place. Uh, so that's what I want to make sure that I clear up. So on that note, um, my good brother, Kala Genesis, I uh, just like for you to open up, uh, give us a nice uh, introduction and, uh, you know, tell us uh, why Liberia and Tell us uh, all the wonderful things that you're working on and what you want to share with us in Liberia also. And then also definitely okay. that to the mindset of wanting to share more with people and want to see more people come to Liberia and ultimately how you got into the involvement of connecting with Liberia. Well, uh, uh, as you know, I've been studying Liberia for like most of my life. Uh, the country, and I was always fascinated by this country. Uh uh, and I, it's like that was Liberia, and I, and I always studied Africa. You know, I always like I I try to put the two together, but I separate the two, right? Um, um, uh, I'm always fascinated by African history, African culture, and um, and I don't see Africa as like a lot of people see as a place of sorrow and victimization, and everything like that. When you study the real history of Africa, there's a lot of triumph, right? And everything goes through peaks and valleys, right? You know, at one time, Africa was on top at its peak, you know, and then it goes through uh, the valley, goes down. Those things happen and stuff like that. So what I'm saying is, though, uh, we can't look at any part of Africa as like it's hopeless. It'll never get better because that's just the way we are and stuff like that. You know, there's certain problems, right, that in, that are in Africa right now that you have to learn to avoid and understand the con condition of all human beings are capable of doing good and great things. When you know your history of, of Africa or anybody else, right? You know there's great people, there's people that are mediocre, there's people that are no good in any culture, anything. Your uh, your our job is to discern who to deal with and who not to deal with and everything. And uh and, and, and not be impulsive about anything that we're getting into. The reason why I chose Liberia, right? Because um for the longest time I was thinking about the idea of what if we built communities? We had the idea of an African years ago, building African American, African diaspora communities in Africa a decade ago. Okay. We were looking at other countries like uh, that had really more advanced infrastructure to start with, like Angola and places like that. But, um, and, and I, as far as Angola, it's just too far. Right. So, uh, I never really thought of Liberia as a place where we can build like that in right now because, like I said, I knew we had infrastructure challenges because of the Civil War and stuff like that. And I have the same mindset a lot of you have. Oh, we had a Civil War and all this stuff like this. Terrible. Then when I went there, I was surprisingly shocked, you know, how well-preserved the country is, right? And uh, and despite everything, despite all the, uh, the, the stuff, 
like that, it was better than I really thought it was, you know? And I said, these people are holding a country together or with nothing, right? The same, if you give the same conditions, the resources to anybody, to a black community in America, they will collapse into chaos. But Liberians make do on what little they have and they somehow make that country work. So I said, wow, this is something I could, I could, I could, I could, I could deal with, you know? Then I found out uh, that um, um, it's how easy it is to own a business, own property, and you don't have to go through the whole thing of uh, uh, traditional chiefs and everything like that. You know, uh, you have th three different types of property. You got traditional land, which is the majority of land in the country. Uh, you have government land, or actually the government land is the majority. The traditional land is a large thing. Then you got private property that's deeded and registered. You know, that's private property, William Byron, Byron William Sullivan. And, uh, and I was told by people that uh, uh, after the year return, the government of Liberia said, look, they want to compete with Ghana and these other countries for African Americans coming here and doing tourism, uh, buying properties, uh, you know, developing and stuff like that. And so, so they're going to, they want to, they want to make it easy for you to do all those things. And I was like, are you, you kidding me? You know, it's like, no, no, no. We, you know, there's always discussion about how we can get black people from the West to come here and spend money and, and buy property open businesses, trade back and forth and stuff like that. And so, but the thing is, there's not been a really an outreach because they don't really know how to do it. All they know is it's there. So I said, you know something, that's good enough for me. You know, as long as I know, there's nobody telling me no. And they say, look, here in Liberia, if you have a business idea, nobody will tell you no. If you have an investment idea or anything like that, no one's going to say, get on the plane, get the hell out of here. No, no one's going to send you back. And I was like, wow, that's that's really, really great. You know, that's really, really great. And so, you know, and, and then that's where I met Ross. And Ross was really the one who really uh, uh, brought it home with me. Because you know? I was still skeptical, like, yeah, you know, the war and all stuff like this. And I wasn't too sure about George Weah. And everything. Yeah, before, you, before you continue, Kala, uh, tell people who Ross is and uh, explain his name. That way, when they see him, they kind of know um, who okay, he is. Okay, Ross Nuon Dunbar, right? Ross Nuon Dunbar, his family goes back. Uh, uh, a really prominent family, the Dunbars. You know, uh, he's both uh, indigenous background and and Congo. Congo means people of well, uh, Caribbean and African American descent. You know, and, and so his family's prominent. He's very educated and stuff like that. So he's very the Pan Africanist, and he's been in these circles for years and everything. So him and I uh, found out we knew a lot of the same people. You know, online and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, man, we were sitting there completing these other sentences and everything. And him and I just really hit it off. So for three years, him and I have been building. And he's gained my trust and confidence. It wasn't all perfect, right? But he's gained my custom, uh, trust and confidence. If I need something done, he does it. You know, he gets it done. He knows all the top people. He knows everybody. Anything that needs to be done in the country, anything that needs to be done, he can make sure it happens, you know? And who not to deal with and stuff like that, you know. And so uh, I had, had I cut a lot of people out that I was messing with. He said, nah, he said, Colin, those people don't know what they're talking about. They're talking about the game when I saw I took his advice. Yeah. You know, so so he's been guiding me in Liberia about who to uh who to talk to, who to mess with, who to uh who to do business with and stuff like that for the years. He's a, he's a BAO, the Black African Infrastructure, my organization, uh, uh, uh chapter head in Liberia. And also he has a part of the Liberian Tourism Association and several and Yell. And Yell is a, a headed by uh Johan uh, Henderson. This is an African American guy <clears throat> who's building uh who has an NGO in Liberia, like Ross works for him and several other NGOs in the country. And you know, they're doing sort of projects and stuff like that. And we're, all we're doing is putting it all together and you know with with, with with faith and everything like that, you know, these projects will get off the ground one day, little by little, penny by penny. Uh, we have the uh, Amani Beach uh, up and running right there. Uh, that's where I'm gonna be staying at. The Amani Beach uh, uh, property that uh, uh, that that's part of us and everything like that. It's right there on the beach in Marshall, you know. And it's, it's so so so. What I'm saying is, you know, uh, the people I have on the ground and people I know and stuff like that have been really really uh, 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 splendid, and, and I have not had any issues with anybody in Liberia uh, so far yet. And, and I just, you know, and and, and I, I tell people all the time, right? I said, that's my experience, you know? That's my experience so far. 
And so, like I say, you, but you still have to just you, do your own discernment and do your thing and make sure you take advice from people who know better. Just don't meet anybody and say, oh, yeah, this person says this because you don't know who you're dealing with. You don't know uh, who these people that we know in Liberia knows who owns what, what knows who. If somebody says they're this or not, we could tell you who's who's real, who's with the government, who's who has this. So uh, there's not going to be this, you know, somebody come up saying, I'm this. I own this acres of land and whatnot. You know, Ross and all these people. Everybody know who who uh, who owns what and, and, and who's the movers and shakers of the, the country. So that's one thing I, I, I you know, I'm thankful for that I have him. And it saved me a lot of time and a lot of headaches. You know, because I came across a lot of people that I was ready to jump in the pot with when I and I met Ross and I was like, oh man, you saved me a lot of headaches because I would have been discouraged about Liberia and walked off from it. You know, so he saved me a lot of time. And a lot of stuff like that, you know, uh, in the country, you know. So it's been three years or whatnot, you know. Now we're starting to really start to pick up steam. And we have a major investor coming to Liberia. Uh, uh, he's supposed to be there. He's, I talked to Mr. Simon this morning. And he said he's going to meet me in Liberia. He's a major investor uh, coming to Liberia one night by the, uh, on the invitation of the government. And I was the one who introduced, we, Ross and I, was the one who introduced him to Liberia. He picked our brains about the country and whatnot. He opened his own bank in Liberia. And so, um, we got people want to come in and do business in the country right now, and they want to uh, do stuff. And our goal is to help people and uh, educate them, give them consultation about how to do that and stuff like that, and, uh, and just be a, a, a hand and people like that. So our goal is is once people start having a positive image of Liberia, like if people come up, or going to come on a trip and come on vacation, they come back and say, "Yeah, I had a good time over there. You know, it was a great time." That spreads uh, the message that Liberia is open for business and everything. That's what we want to do. It's not going to be easy at first. It's not going to be perfect and everything. But I do believe Liberia deserves a chance. You know, it deserves a chance like any other country uh, to, uh, uh, especially as in the fact that our ancestors from America are the ones who created the country and built the country for, with their bare hands. And when you see the marvel, the architecture and stuff like that, you realize our ancestors were not playing games. The, the the African Masonic Order and all these other people that settled in Liberia, the stone temples that you're going to see and stuff like that. It's just a, truly amazing. Uh, you're going to see 19th century Black America duplicated in, in Africa. You know, it's just a, a, amazing, a, a blend of that and traditional African culture. You got 16 tribes there and people pretty much get along. You know, I had people from all different types of background. You know, everybody in my inner circle is a Fasa. A crew, Fran, uh, uh, Gio, Mano, you know, Gola, Vi, all these people, we're all brothers, you know, in this uh, thing. There's no tribalism, there's none of that. You know, we're all pan Africanists, we're all black nationalists, and, you know, that's that spirit of black nationalism and everything. And the di difference about Liberia is they know who we are, they know our story. You know, you don't have to apologize for being who you are, they know who you are. You know, you don't have to apologize. They know why you come to Liberia. They know why, they know why you're there. They know, yeah, this is a perfect place for you. They know the sense of peace that country is going to give you. You know, I said, I just can't describe it and say you feel the peace, right? Yeah. They know the stuff we go through in America, always apologizing for being black, always being on your guard and everything. When I was in Liberia, first I said, when I went there, I said, in this land, I'm a king. And then when I left the first, I said, in this land, for the first time in my life, I'm a human being. I didn't have to worry about my race or my color and everybody because everybody looks like me, right? And it helps that the people in Liberia like the same sort of foods, music, and stuff like that, you know? And it's like a blend of African culture and uh, African-American and Caribbean culture all mixed together in a modern cosmopolitan culture. It's just beautiful. You know, it's really easy uh, culture to get along with and everything. So when you go to Liberia, you're going to feel like you're at home. You're going to see people that look like your cousins, your aunties, and everybody else you know around you, you know? So I, 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 I thoroughly enjoy being, you know? Yes, Color Genesis, brother. Appreciate your welcome visit and uh, you know, for us to join you in Liberia and uh, appreciate you just being the, the person <coughs> that, that, that went on to the slavery this. Bill of Foundation and then willing to share it with the rest of us. So 
family. Ultimately, that's how a lot of us have gotten to Africa and connected other people to Africa. So it's a level of networking we've been doing over the years. So uh, be free to just connect with our brother. And if anyone have any uh, direct questions for Kala at this moment, uh, you can just unmute yourself and then ask your question. Uh, beyond that, I just um, want to get uh, Winnie introduced uh, next. So any questions out for Kala? And if you don't have a question right now and you have one later, that's uh, absolutely fine. All right, uh, Wayne, uh, let me know if you're available to unmute yourself. Hey, Bamani, I'm available. Hello, everybody. Africa for the Africans. My name is Wayne Ahmed, a.k.a. Wayne Wonder. And I can't wait for you guys to come. I am so excited. The time is now. The time is here for, you know, not just along for this trip, but just for us to enjoy the original land of return. The love of liberty, you know, brought us here. That's our slogan in Liberia. You know, everybody, when it comes to, you know, talking about Africa and moving back to Africa, they always mention Ghana. But a lot of times they forget that Liberia has started this since 1821. We were the originators and, you know, we're not going to allow or not to say allow somebody. Every, every African country is welcome to take the credit, but we have to have the last say so. And, you know, Liberia is a land, despite what you see online, Liberia is a land of peace, you know. Uh, we have a rich culture that we're willing to share with the world. And we're very accepting towards foreigners. We love foreigners. There's even a saying in Liberia that Liberian men love everybody uh, but themselves. Basically, we love foreigners. We love to host we love to share our hospitality. You know, we our hospitality is not just African um, in origin, but it's also, we also have that Southern charm, you know, and you will see a little bit of aspects of it when you get to meet Liberian people, not only here in America, but there in Liberia, you will see some of our culture and the sim similarities that we have to share. So yeah, I can't wait. We only have 15 more days. And so I guess this is the time now, I guess, just to prepare, but just to relax and, yeah, relax for, before the real relaxation. <laughs> it will be an educational tour, but it will also be a relaxing tour. I appreciate you, Wayne. And uh, can you mm -hmm. also share uh, some more about your uh, background and your connection to Liberia uh, so people okay. know who you are and then also talk about uh, your, your staff and crew that's going to host us? Okay, uh, I'm first generation Liberian. I'm Liberian American, uh, born and raised in Washington D.C., but I've been raised in the Liberian community all my life. Uh, my father was a former diplomat at the Embassy of Liberia here in D.C., so I'm quite familiar with a lot of the people who you probably have read about, if not them exactly, but their family members. So I know what goes on behind the scenes <laughs> and the making of the Republic of Liberia and what goes in front of the scenes too. So through that knowledge and also through my blood and through my love of Liberia, in 2020, I decided to come out with an organization called the Liberian Heritage Society. And our motto is to watch objective is to preserve and promote Liberian cultural heritage. Because many times, you know, like I said before, when people think of, you know, returning back to Africa, they think of Ghana. And no offense to Ghana. Don't feel like I'm trying to shame Ghana. I love my Ghanaians. You know, my mom is actually a uh, Liberian Ghanaian. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, we started this off and it's time for the world to know. And many times when you look on Google, the narrative that you'll see about Liberia is not the Liberia that I know. It's not the Liberian that most people know, those that are familiar with Liberians. You would say, but, you know, if you're really familiar with Liberians, you would say, this is not the right depiction of Liberia. And you would ask yourself, you know, why do they always show Liberia in this light? And, you know, many of it has to do with politics, maybe because... If Liberia was to be seen as the promised land, as Dwayne McCullough liked to call it in his book, 
then maybe black people will have high self-esteem all around the world. So many times, you know, they have to make Liberia look like the laughing stock. If they make they have to make it look like something that is really not. Because if a black man has that pride in knowing that in the 1800s, 200 years ago, before social media, before, you know, Google and all of this was able to get black people from the Americas, North America, South America, Central America, and the Caribbean and establish a state, you know, I mean, black people will, will have high self-esteem. So they have to make Liberia look like something that is not. So I came up with the organization not only to preserve, but actually to promote the real Liberia not only through social media, but through public outreach and through tours. So I'm happy to have Africa for the Africans come and interest us with guiding you guys around the country. Yes, Sister Wayne, appreciate your energy. That was a wonderful uh, introduction. Um, mm -hmm. The same with you also, our caller. So the family, uh, those are our two hosts. And uh, once again, our, you know, our good brother, Kala Genesis, is the one that introduced us to Liberia and uh, basically just uh, gave high recommendations for us to come and expand our uh, tour operation across um, uh, Liberia. And uh, Wayne is a person that's um, you know, organizing certain things on the ground. Uh, so when we start talking about hotels, uh, the first hotel that we go into uh Winnie's the one that I recommended. It's called Labasa uh, Lodge. It's an incredible resort. Uh, so definitely, uh, then all of us uh, recommended uh, the uh, Kandeja Resort, but Winnie uh, finalized the deal. So I'm just showing you how we're working on things. And then we're going to our Nana Lodge, uh, a nice tropical resort right there on the coast also. So all of those hotels I just mentioned is on the coast. And our good brother, College Genesis, is the one that experienced uh, Nana Lodge and I uh, recommend that we stay there and just enjoy the, the the serenity, the peace, and things like that. So that's what we have set up. And then um, I found a nice hotel um, of Tubman Boulevard in Congo Town, and that is uh, Sincor Palace. Uh, so that was a perfect name, perfect energy, uh, and it ended up just uh, working out. Uh, so all together, uh, we, we'll work things out, and then we need to have our crew on the ground, and that's going to be hosting us uh, from tour guiding to those who want to come out with us to enjoy social nightlife. And so we have some incredible social nightlife. So for those who are just open to this enjoy the night energy, come up with us. Um, and if you don't want to come out with us, then stay at the resort, relax. Um, uh, most of these resorts are places you can get uh, from massages to pedicure, manicure, and all kind of this uh, incredible this, uh, taste of paradise. And sometimes we're going to be eating at the resorts and sometimes we'll find places out. Uh, so we're going to be introducing you to uh, what uh, Kala and Winnie talk about, you know, one of the best international uh, dishes in the world, uh, the library and different flavors of this, uh, what library is today. So always looking forward to that, you know, uh, especially that's coming from Jamaica, where we just enjoy fine dining and just use what we grow in the country. Uh, so it's a great experience um, for all of us as we look to expand. And this will be my country, uh, number 11 and 12 on the African continent. Uh, so we also go into Morocco which um, Winnie can also share with us more about Morocco because I've never been there also, but uh, we have a nice, uh, you know, basic schedule for you to just enjoy your layover. All right, uh, Kala and uh, Winnie, you want to say anything before um, open up into yeah. to other people? Go ahead, brother. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, in, in uh, Morocco, my friend Naya said at the uh, uh, hotel, they're going to put you in, Mor in uh, Morocco. You got, uh, you're going to have the um, uh, hotel room and you're gonna have uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all buffets. You know, he says. Uh, so you have that, and then by the time you, after dinner and whatnot, you get get ready to get on a plane. They'll get you to get get on the plane. So that's a nice little relaxation before you fly to Liberia. You know, so you're gonna have you know nice you know three continent uh, breakfast. He said that nice gourmet breakfast. You just know, a buffet style. Same thing with lunch. Same thing with dinner. You know. So they'll take care of you at the hotel. Excellent, man. Definitely looking forward to it. Uh, anything else you want to share about anything else that we have uh, talked about? Yeah, what Lane, Wayne said was absolutely true, you know, about the history of Liberia. If you, if the world, uh, uh, like uh, the Madam Cooper is, um, uh, she's a sec, uh, secretary of agriculture in Liberia. She's really 
turning Liberia around as far as agriculture. They've now manufactured products and everything. <laughs> she has a shirt, right? She's in the United States right now. She's in Maryland. She has a shirt that says Liberia versus the world. Mm-hmm. It's really the whole thing is there's some reason why the world does not want to see particularly black America uh, and diaspora uh, embrace Liberia. Why? Because of the country that we founded, you know, you know, and, and not just the African diaspora, but also in local Africans together built a country, you know, on our own without white people, without uh, being colonized, without no white settlement, uh, no white farmers or anything like that. So we put a country together on our own. So it's in the best interest of the racists around the world to always discourage us about Liberia, always bring up the civil war, always bring up ethnic conflict and everything like that. When I went there, I didn't know what to expect, right? And I was just, my first day in Liberia, I was literally terrified, you know? I was literally terrified. I said, oh, man, are they going to think I'm a Congo man? I can say, I, I when I went there, man, the people were just so freaking friendly. I have never seen that in my life. People were just so friendly. And man, I was like in tears my first day. I was like, my God, I never felt this in my life and whatnot. Just people just embracing you, just just accepting you who you are, you know, just accepting who you are. When I'm like, wow, these people are very friendly, you know, and just really nice, you know, just really real nice people, you know. And a lot of librarians don't have a lot, man. But you just, I, you know, I'm like, I say to myself, the children. Let me tell you about the librarian children, right? One, they're just so cute, you know, but they're so respectful. My very first night in Liberia, let me tell you how, about my very first night in Liberia, right? I told Sine, right, Masakoy, right? She comes from the Masakoy family, you know? They're a prominent family that goes way back, you know? She's she's both Vi and Masakoy, but you could tell she's a red ball. She could tell she got that Masa, that uh, that Johnson blood in her, right? The Masakoy's and the Johnson's mixed together, you know? But anyway, she basically, uh, said, I said, I want to see the beach, right? I said, well, I will take you to the beach, right? So right back where we were staying at, in Congo Town, right? Uh, right next to uh, the vice president at the time, Jules Howard Shell. How I was staying right next to her, right? I said, take me to the beach, right? So we're walking down this dark alley, and I seen a bunch of young people, right? And a bunch of kids, right? We walked by, right? And the kids, when they saw us walking by, they stopped talking. And was like, how, how you doing? How you doing? And everything like that, right? So how y'all doing? How you, how you doing? Hi, you know? So respectful, Right? And then the guys are like, oh my God, man. It's like, all right. Everybody had their iPhones on with their with the cameras on because it was dark, right? The street was dark. It had no lights on, right? You know? And so so everybody had their little camera uh, uh, lights on and everything like that. And everybody's like, how you doing? How you doing? Everything's so peaceful. I'm like, my God. I said, I would never walk the streets in America like this at night. You know? I would never walk in Portsmouth or Norfolk at night like this. You know? So I was like, man, God, I'm at the beach, you know? And I walk around the kids is just basically, and then when we walk down a little way, it, after we got a little farther down, and the kids start talking again. So they wouldn't talk loud in front of us, right? They stopped what they were talking about, right? Let us said hello, how you doing? Yes, ma'am, yes, sir. And then let us pass, right? And they got we got a little ways down and then they start talking again. You know? And I'm saying to myself, wow, these kids are so respectful of adults. And I'm saying to myself, man, I said, yeah, I said, that's my whole perception of the world started to change. You know, then I realized it's not money, it's not anything, you know, it's just values, you know? It's just values, you know, and, and just, you know, and and, and then on the, on, the, on, on the radio, right? You don't hear a bunch of kill this and kill that and everything. You hear a lot of Afro beats, you hear a lot of old school hip hop, uh, you hear uh, gospel on the radio. You even hear you even hear country music on the radio, you know, from America, you know, and I'm just like this. So all day, people are listening to Afro beats and they're listening to Afro Arapino music, whatever it's called, and everything like that, and and, and uh, they're listening to old school hip hop, jazz, everything like that. And I'm saying to myself, no wonder uh, people are so peaceful. They're not hearing kill this, kill that, murder this, murder that, all day and all night and everything. I said, no wonder the people are so peaceful. You know, and I'm like, wow, I was just like blown away by that, you know, and that to me is peace. You know, and I was like, oh, man, I, I can I can live with this, you know. So. Yes, Kyle, I appreciate it, man. Definitely appreciate you sharing uh, your experience and uh, just giving people an awareness of uh, the flow of uh, Liberia. 
so what, let's uh, move forward and uh, hear from everyone else. Uh, don't know who want to start first. I can just go and you know, select uh, different names. But we'd love to hear from everyone on uh, what they're looking forward to experiencing Liberia and uh, why Liberia and why they decide to join a journey with us um, here in Liberia. Uh, so let me see, uh, Juma, Juma, greetings, my good brother. Are you up? Or if uh, Juma is not available, anybody else? Uh, let's give a, a nice introduction. You can, I don't know, maybe a few minutes, five minutes. Um, just... I, I, I have one question. Uh, go ahead with your question, Ant. This Ronnie. How you doing, everybody? So right. they play American music over there? And uh, that's that's super cool because when uh, I've been to Tanzania and to Ghana, Ghana and uh, they didn't have no American music. That's going to be different. Yo, wait till know, you go. Man. Wait till wait till you go to uh uh, uh the Calabas man. That you yeah. know, yo yo that's the best club I've been to in my life. You gonna swear you was in New York, Philly, or whatever like that? You know, because a lot of people are from the states, they and whatnot. They were like, yo, is Philly in the house? Is Jersey in the house? Is uh is uh Houston in the house? You know, is yeah. California in the house? You know, I mean, I mean, the place was packed. It's how, uh, the Calabas, we left at like one o'clock in the morning. The line was still wrapped around the block to get in. You know, wow, wow. You know? that was the best club I ever been in, in my life. And, and wh why does uh, Liberia? Uh, the young lady was speaking earlier. She was saying that they everybody thinks less of Liberia. Why is that? The media, the media, the, the the media. Because it, Liberia, when you talk about Liberia. Anything to slight Black America, right? They do it. They have to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. You know when they talk about Liberia, that's where African Americans went over there and slaves. That if you see how strong these Liberians are, there's no way in the world that you're gonna have the Crown crew and all these people and you're gonna oppress. That's not happening. Did we have an advantage over there? There was some things happen, yeah. But the bottom line is, you know, you you, you ain't see Liberians, man. They love their country. They love their country, and now they're really starting to embrace. The dual heritage, right? They'll say, mm -hmm. yeah, some of our ancestors came from America, some of my ancestors are from here, we're not, we're, you know, we're one people, you know? Uh -huh. And they know all about Black America. They watch, uh, they grew up watching our sitcoms, they grew up watching our, our music, our movies, and everything like that, you know? Wow, that's pretty cool, man. Okay, that, that was my really my only question. Well, appreciate it, uh, Ronnie. And while you add it, uh, uh, can you uh, do an introduction of yourself? And okay, my name is Ronnie Kansler, and I'm from California. And I'm looking forward to going to Liberia, and hope I have a great time with all you people that's going along with us on this journey. Looking to meet all y'all. And what? I'm what looking is forward to meeting you too, brother. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, Ronnie, and share some of your previous experience uh, traveling with us and then traveling to Africa in general. Uh, Tanzania, that I mean, he he the one got me turned. I'm turned out on Africa now. Now I'm going twice a year because when he took me to Tanzania in 23, I think we went. I mean, I've never been there, and the, the trip was just I've never I've never did nothing like that. I mean, we, we caught two planes, we went on two ferries. We was on a beach that looked like Jamaica, Hawaii, and everywhere else. And it was just, that trip there was just, man, it was so eye-opening and just, I had a ball. I did. And how long did we, I think we stayed 12 days or 13 days or whatever it was, but it. Yeah, it was, um, it, it was, it was, uh, it was nine days and it was November 2022. Uh, with me, yeah. you, Juma, uh, and it was this, you know, and family, yeah, these are great brothers. A, yeah, and we just had a ball. It was like we stayed on the move the whole time. We was just moving. We caught a ferry. I was I was like, I was looking for the door on the ferry because we caught the ferry and it was a storm. I'm like, this man, but mine got us going on a ferry in a storm and it's two hours. But it was the best time of my life. That ferry was the best was time. You said the ferry was what? It was zooming across that water. I know. And no, I've never been on no two hour ferry <laughs> in in a storm, you know? Right. But it was cool. It was that that was the best trip. Ghana is fun. But I, I just gotta say I had more fun when I went to Tanzania. Mm. 
Yes, Anybody my good else? brother. Yes, my good brother. Um, appreciate you, Ronnie, and thank you for uh, joining us uh, there in uh, Tanzania. And also, thank you for introducing us to your, uh, your friend, uh, Misty, uh, that's joining us, uh, which we'll hear from um, if she's open for an introduction. But let me just uh, get our good brother, uh, Juma Rafiki. And greetings, my good brother, Juma. And Juma has been so many places with me, sometimes I forget. Always uh, good to have you around. You're great energy, brother. So uh, welcome back to the journey of a lifetime to Liberia. Can you introduce yourself to everyone? Tell them yeah. where you've been and why you're taking this journey. And and uh... yeah, um, I'm my, I'm Juma Rafiki. I'm out here in Los Angeles. Uh, Ronnie and I are friends. I've uh, been friends for 20 years, and uh, he was also on the trip. Uh, I was also on the trip with him to Zanzibar and Tanzania uh, last year. Um, I've been traveling with uh, Bomani since 2019. It seems like I'm um, I'm going to Ghana was the first place that I, I I had ever went to, and it was one of um, the most exciting trips that I had ever been on before. And when I went to Africa, it just dispelled all of the myths and things that I'd heard about here in the United States. And um, as I had mentioned before, it was always uh, you know, a lifelong quest to go to Africa to try to find out more about who I was as a black man in the, in the world. So now um, I'm going back again in, um, what, I think, a couple of weeks now and um, to uh, Liberia. And I look forward to learning more about that, you know, with the rest of you guys. Hi, Misty. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Gail. Hi, Inez. And Dwayne. Colin? Yeah, that's our color. Yeah, I'm calling oh, Okay, so. all right. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah, I yeah. see. Yeah, I see the uh, last four that's letters. A, that's, a, that's, a, that's your favorite YouTuber right there. That don't have. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to ask Colin, what is the um, what is the ratio uh between uh the currency there and the dollar? Well, when I was there last year, it was um, one sixty one, to thing. But now, all over Africa is suffering, right? The CD is high to the dollar now. Same thing with the Naira, same thing with the Liberian dollar. But the Liberian dollar is, uh, uh, the American dollar could be used in Liberia just like regular currency, you know? Yeah. I like carrying around, I, I, I also remember in Liberia, they don't accept change. So leave all your change, your coin change at home. Right. You know, they don't accept coin change in the country at all, you know? And also another thing to note too is this, when you get there, uh, download the uh, MTN SendWave app. Pay for your stuff through uh, uh, mobile money. You know, easiest way to buy stuff. Most of the street vendors and stuff like that got mobile uh, money, and it'll save you money on ATM fees. Okay. okay? That's a good thing. Okay, though. so yeah. that's the thing. I will, I'll, 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 I'll brief everybody. Ross and everybody will brief you about how to download the MTN, the uh, uh the send wave, right? That's MTN's at least to the mobile money in the in the country, right? MTN's the uh, is the network in the country, right? That sends the mobile money, and so uh, the fees are only like what, like thirty cents. You said you it's know? an app. You said, it's an app. you said it's an app, right? Yes, an app. Yeah. Oh, okay. The send oh. wave app. So, so, so therefore, when you go to some place and you go to vendors, street vendors, and everything like that. They'll say, okay, the number, boom, boom, boom. They say, okay, go, boom. You know, the first time I went to Liberia, man, I spent so much money on ATM fees and everything like that. Man, I was like, I went to all that money. Every time I go to ATM, five dollars, seven dollars, everything. This last time, I didn't spend. I went to the ATM, I think once uh, when I was there, and also twice because I wanted some cash. Because sometimes I I, I like having uh, cash on me. Uh, you, you know, sometimes you, uh, it's like a door for you have cash in your pocket. Singles carry some singles, you know. You know, somebody you go someplace, and like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody's on street corner and they want to give you directions or give you something like that. Pull out a dollar, they'll give you the world, you know, one dollar. Right. Right? You can't get do nothing with a dollar in America. Right? Yeah. You pull out a dollar when I use somebody's day, you know. <laughs> so, you know, so it's like this. I guess I got it to do Hotel. you know. I pull out two dollars on that. The guy said, No, nobody can come in. Pull out what we call small, small. And the guy was like, okay, you know, some small, small. So, yeah. Took me around to do core, gave us a tour for two bucks. Call you it, <laughs> is, um, is um, Liberia an ECOWAS member? Yeah, ECOWAS is dying, you know? You know, 
Thanks for watching, Diane. Uh, Niger, Guinea, Mali, and uh, Burkini Faso pulled out of ECOWAS. It's collapsing. Okay. ECOWAS now is like a, is a puppet of the, the West. And I, and I knew this. I was telling everybody that was going to come. Same thing, same thing that happened with the African Union. All these, it's, that's the things right there. So let me tell you, so I'm going well, to talk about that more on the trip. I don't want to bore anybody with history right now. You're going to see the Pan-African Plaza, right? And I'm going to tell you a little history on why they destroyed Liberia. You know, when you see that Pan-African Plaza and what Liberia was supposed to be like the headquarters, Liberia was the headquarters of OAU. The OAU was supposed to be the preemptive organization for the continent. One currency, one military, everything. Liberia was going to be the headquarters of like the, the continental military and peacekeeping force and also the African Development Bank. After the 1980 coup, the African Development Bank moved, moved to Abidjan, uh, Ivory Coast instead of Liberia, Monrovia, you know? So therefore, there's a lot of history that we don't know. And I, I bet you anybody doesn't even know about that OAU conference of 1979 was probably like that was a buildup of, well, of the work of Kwame Nkrumah and all of them. They had agreed on certain things that were going to basically set Africa on a course. Had that had had that rice riots and that coup never happened in 1980, Africa would probably be where Asia is right now. You know, and Liberia is the grandfather state, was the grandfather state of the continent. All the countries in Africa got their start in Liberia. All the leaders you see, Nelson Mandela, Kenneth Kaunda, uh, uh, Patrice Lumumba, Kwame Nkrumah, all came to Liberia because when Seiko Tori, the French and the British weren't going to teach them how to, how to uh, uh, d d d certain things about diplomatic protocol and stuff like that. They went to Liberia to learn how the embassy works and how things work. They went to Liberia to study about diplomacy, even about passports and travel and stuff like that. Liberia educated a whole generation of, of post World War II leaders. And Nami Zikiwe, you know, he wrote his book, you know, and, you know, because, because Liberia was a problem, right? Because the, the uh, Winston Churchill said Africa will never be free. They'll never be free. It'll be another 200 years. And then Africans will say, well, how is this black country uh, governing itself? And they'll say, oh, they're not really black. They're not really black. And, and a lot of Westerners will paint Liberia's leaders, past leaders, as looking white. No. And you look at the, we, we did some research. We looked at a real picture. All the leaders in Liberian history were dark skinned, brown skinned uh, black men from the West and the Caribbean and everything like that. But the West basically was trying to convince Africa that Liberia was something different. It was not really an, an African country and everything. And Liberia had a lot of Garveyites there, right? Instead, it, who worked for the Union. Liberia was where the OAU was founded in, in the hills of Santa Quella, you know, in Nimba County. That's where the OAU was, found, was founded, the Organization of African Union. It was by Marcus Garveyites and whatnot. People said, well, Garvey never went to Liberia, made it to Africa, right? But his father's followers did. A lot of them became senators and congressmen, and they were pushing the idea of a one uh, 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 Africa uh, uh, in through Liberia. So you're going to learn a lot about the importance of this country. And when they say, well, oh, the first Af independent African country, they completely leave Liberia out of history. Liberia was already independent. They say Ghana, 1950, the first African country to gain independence. You know, they say, well, they never qualify. Ethiopia and Liberia were already independent. They leave that out. Okay. Okay. So, yes, my good brother, Kyle Genesis. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, looking forward to this when we get there in the journey with you. You can uh, drop uh, those knowledge at the different his circle sites, and we just create great his circle videos and films uh, and just push more of Liberia. That's one thing um, me, uh, me, you, and Winnie talked about. Uh, so, uh, family, for those who are out there, we know with your cameras, uh, do your best to shoot as many videos, take as many pictures, and upload them all over the network. And then let's uh, just, you know, let's show our ancestors some love. We'll build a foundation for us to uh, reconnect uh, to our uh, ancestral land. Uh, on that note, uh, let's uh, proceed. Um, let me uh, see who, um, uh, Teresa, let me know if you're available for uh, introduction and if you want to share anything about uh, your circle knowledge of uh, Liberia. And, you know, uh, since you're one of the, one of the uh, one of um, uh, many other people also that's in the group that's uh, been to so many places uh, with me and also so many places on your own. All right, so family, everybody is muted, so you just have to unmute yourself. Uh, so Teresa, let me know if you're flexible for an introduction. 
Right, and uh, then we have uh, Gail, Inez, and Misty. Um, all you have to do is unmute yourself and introduce yourself, and then we just proceed to the next person, and then I'll go through the program, and then we just open up things for questions and answers. Hello, everyone. My name is Misty McCoy. I was invited by Ron, and I'm looking forward to meeting everyone and having a good time. All right, excellent, uh, Misty. Uh, you know, if you don't mind, uh, would you like to share? Um, you know, you know, she, she introduce yourself to us and share certain things about uh, you know, the, maybe a background or just uh, tell us what you're looking forward to and uh, have you been to Africa before? And if so, uh, what countries and your experiences traveling? I never been to Africa, and um, I'm just looking forward, looking forward to the. Um, the culture. That's excellent. So we are we look forward to meeting you and look forward to you just enjoying the uh, journey of a lifetime uh, with us. So definitely, Thank I appreciate your energy. Thank you. All right, family. So we're gonna proceed. Uh, just uh, looking to see uh, uh, and anyone who wants to just wave off to not to do an introduction. That's absolutely fine. But I have um Teresa, Gail, and Inez. Hi, my name is Inez. I'm from New York, but I'm living in New Jersey right now. I've been on three trips with Bomani. Uh, actually, this will be my third. I went to Ghana and Senegal with them as well. And I'm really looking forward to Liberia because, you know, it has such a unique history. Uh, it's different than the other African countries. So I'm really looking forward to the trip and meet, meeting everybody. Well, excellent. I uh, appreciate it, Inez. Definitely looking forward to connecting with you. Always a great soul and a great energy. And thank you for also introducing your friend that's coming with us, uh, Anne. Oh, right. Yeah. I don't know where she is, but this will be, uh, she's really looking forward to the Liberia trip as well. Yeah. I, when I told her about it, she was very excited. So I'm glad she's coming along. Uh, perfect. Well, excellent. So, family, uh, let's see if we can get some uh, introduction from uh, the one or two other people. And uh, as people, uh, as more members are uh, coming, uh, with this, while we're talking about certain things, we'll just get them uh, to introduce themselves. That way, um, and I was wishing that everyone had their cameras on, but later on in the group chat, what we'll do is uh, we just post introduction photos of ourselves. And that way, when we all meet up in New York, which I'll talk about, we'll be able to just see each other. Our greetings are Gail. Um, welcome to the Liberia Journey of a Lifetime. Uh, you ready to introduce yourself? Uh, we can't hear you well. Uh, yes, I can hear you now. Your mic is Mike is breaking up. I might have to go out and come back in. Your mic is breaking up, so I'll try to just uh, reconnect, uh, if anything. Uh, so, family, uh, when the next person is ready, they can just, uh, let us know. Uh, meanwhile, let me uh, get us to uh, some screen sharing. Where is our screen? All right, family. So here we are on our website, africafordafricans.org. So what I always recommend anyone who's traveling with us, 
uh, get uh, go to our website and go directly to the tour link uh, that has all information for your tour. So in this case, uh, we're going to Liberia and Morocco Roots and Culture Tour, April 2024. And so the main thing, once you go to our website, uh, what you have is all updated information for the tour. So you have an overview with uh, the basically uh, what's included, what's not included, and an overview of all the sites and places that we're going to on the journey and uh, links to the hotels. Uh, the itinerary is a full day today, including the flight schedule of when we're going and coming back, uh, which I'll also just open up our Royal Air Morocco page and just uh, go through it with uh, everyone. Uh, general terms, all the conditions of the, uh, the journey. A visa process, which uh, was able to work out with uh, with uh, Collagenesis Associate, um, you know, Nguyen, uh, Ross Nguyen uh, Dunbar. So he made sure he closed out uh, on the, on the uh, visas uh, for us. Uh, so that is uh, how we got that process uh, done. Uh, so one or two of us got uh, either passports or sent the visa process in uh, to the embassy. Uh, so that's, um, you know, worked it out many, as many ways as possible. And that's one of those uh, things where we're just trying to find the best uh, option. In this case, uh, that process uh, where you have your, uh, we have your visa, you just print it off and put it in your passport and, and, and just bring it with you and your information's, you know, in the system. So once your passport is scanned, uh, they'll see uh, your visa. So that's the good thing about it. And the copy is just a you know, copy for your records and copy just to uh, show. Uh, improving immune systems. Just always have these incredible this recommendation for those who want to just take a look at it and then check it out. And then departure and reminder list. Uh, based on what um, you know, Wayne and Kala talk about, um, you know, some of those things are, were covered uh, as far as this, uh, the, the, the hardcore preparation and be clear and be ready. Uh, so this list just give you uh, this also a list of those things uh, what to pack and what to bring uh, in detail. Uh, so uh, don't want to go over all of these, um, uh, but these are things that I'm hoping that everybody had a chance to just go through in detail. So for the record, just uh, want to go through um, overview and then just get directly to itinerary, and then I want to just go over the uh, Royal Emirac tickets and explain the sequence. All right, so this is our overview. So right now, all of us have tickets uh, uh, on Royal Air Morocco. We're all on the same flights, uh, except for our hosts. Uh, they'll be there before us. And um, those who need a connection flights from different uh, states, uh, connection flights will arrange. So once you make your entrance into New York, um, you just have to just completely get your bags, get everything all together because you're going on a new complete flight sequence. So that's the main thing I want everyone to understand. So make sure whatever your tickets, uh, make sure you look at the uh, details as far as bags and all those details from the links uh, once you uh, log in. And so before I even uh, proceed, uh, one of the things I want to talk about is uh, the uh, you know, the tickets itself. It was emailed to everyone so and, and with a confirmation number and a link and uh you can just easily just go to royalimmerrock.com and just click on. And once you get to their website, um, all you need is your confirmation number. Just click on manage booking. All right. And what I'm going to do is just stop screen sharing. That way, none of our information is just uh, recorded in the screen. So... I'm going to take one of our confirmation number and use it to go through the uh, information. And hopefully everyone can uh, follow. So 
So that's so basically um once you're in the Royal Emirac website, just click on manage booking, put in your last name and then your confirmation number, and then you can see a ticket in full. And also um it's said to it just have my email address and all of these uh files, but um if you just want an email copy and it's actually send it to me, just um text me and remind me to just send it to you. Uh, beyond that, um, I just recommend you just print it out. Your information is in the system. So once you swipe your passport, it's uh, in there. And that's what the confirmation details is. And so what you do is just uh, click on. All right, let's manage booking. You just click on uh, print. Uh, so click on print document and it will print you a flow of the itinerary. And so while I'm talking about the tour overview, um, we can just uh, talk about the itinerary. So that's why I got this uh, page up. So since I got this page up, uh, so we're set to leave um, uh, March uh, 29th. So our flight leave at uh, 2100. So that is uh, 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in New York JFK at the uh, terminal for Royal Emirac. So for the most part, once you fly in on your Delta or United um, and a different airlines, more than likely, you have to go to a complete different terminal. You can, you may have to just get on the SkyTrain and take your ride to that terminal. So, when you looked at uh, the connection flight that was arranged uh, uh, to uh, JFK, uh, we made sure that you have basically hours, uh, five hours. Uh, you have, you have a lot of time to just get it together and then recheck. And I know it's a hassle and it's a frustration, but we were limited on, you know. It's not like we had like the Delta route that was available in the past. We could have got you through Ghana and then got you connected directly to Liberia and things like that. But uh, that's this is one of the few options that we had to work with. So like the magicians that we are, we just uh, figure it out and uh, put this together and just made sure everybody have connection flights. Uh, so I always recommend that also everyone check their connection flights and make sure that your connection flight is getting there early enough. Like when I mean early enough, I'm talking about uh, since the flight leave at 9 o'clock, you know, you want to make sure everybody get there by 5, 6 o'clock the latest. I'm not saying it's going to just take a whole lot to just go to another terminal, but it's not like you're in Atlanta where you just, well, I guess it's similar, but in Atlanta, you just leave from one uh, one concourse and you get on a train and go to the next one and it's just all connected and smooth. In New York, you may have to do a little bit uh, different, but I think it's still the same thing because you have to go to baggage claim and literally get your bag, so... Uh, I want everybody to be clear on that thing, uh, that uh, directly. You don't, None of us have a connection flight uh, to where your bags are going to be transferred to Royal Emirac. All of us have to get our bags and recheck them. Uh, and then also note that when you have uh, domestic uh, flights, um, some, the bags are not included uh, in some airline situations. So whatever the cost is and things like that, uh, individuals have to pay. Uh, and on Royal Emirac, it's um, I want to say it's uh, three bags. That's what it shows on the details. Uh, so that's uh, one of the situations. So that's uh, the flow of how we got everything uh, connected. So now once we all, all get to uh, New York and we get on that, uh, uh, we get to the airport two hours before, we're going to basically just do introductions, uh, connect with everyone, make sure, you know, give everyone their, their tour supplies and just make sure that uh, we're all clear on everything and then, we'll proceed to what we're going to be talking about on our itinerary when we actually just get to uh, Casablanca and we just enjoy the day out in Casablanca. Um, since we have a long layover, enjoy a nice, uh, you know, you know, nice short journey around the country, uh, around the, um, you know, the city and then also just enjoy this great uh, dining before we just get on the flight and uh, get to Liberia. So that's what it says right there. Uh, when you see um, 7.55, that's when we get there the next morning. So it's a 14 hour and 20 minute uh, layover. All of us have that same flight that's uh, come with us where we have that layover. So it's up to individuals. You can chill in the hotel uh, um, or you can chill in the airport or you can just get out and just enjoy. Uh, so we'll find out more about, uh, you know, we'll talk more about those uh, direct options um, you know, way, way before we leave. But uh, that's uh, the situation we have now is just we're going to, you know, make it a, you know, the, the 14 hours, I know it's like a long time, but I remember just going, us uh, having an eight hour layover in, in Amsterdam. And when we realized when we went out, we realized that it's really not enough time because we have to make our way back. And then we have to also make our way out the airport and make sure you secure all your, your luggage and things like that. So that's going to be a nice um, energy. The next time that we come back around to uh, Casablanca, we'll just actually have a full check in 
and uh, it would just be a lot smoother and simple. But um, want to say let's take advantage of this uh, layover, layover, and just really just get a you know get a feel of the uh, you know, the city and and you know, work time off. But ultimately, it's up to everyone. Um, I don't know if anybody ever want to stay in the airport for fourteen hours, but um, in this situation, if you have your uh, long as you have your American passport, uh, you're good. Um, I can't speak for any other people that old passport, but all the people that's traveling with us are American passports, so you're clear, so you don't need any visas. And then once we are come back, uh, that's the flight that we get on, and that is uh ten fifteen. So by the time we finish our dinner, in the evening, which is you know from getting there, ordering and relaxing, kicking back. Um, by the time we finish and we get to the airport, you know, we're looking at a, just a few hours in. Next thing you know, we take that flight, and that is a nice short flight to Liberia. I'm trying to keep up in my uh, eyesight with the uh, the flight time. So it is uh, 6 hours and 55 minutes uh, from JFK to Casablanca. And uh, with that layover, uh, 14 hours and 20 minutes and... And then you're looking at a four hour and 20 minute flight uh, from Casablanca to um, uh, Liberia, uh, Robert uh, International Airport. Uh, so that is um, our sequence to get to Liberia. And then coming back, um, uh, everything is not gonna always be in sequence uh, with this, but just wanna go over as much information as possible and everybody have access to it. And also, uh, if you, you're you not able to add meals or certain things, um, I'm still going to work it out to where I can add meals. But the ticket situation, as far as seats, I'm going to have to just, my uh, flight is scheduled to get me there to New York early. So I just literally have to just give them our information. I'll try to do it ahead of time to where as soon as it's open up to where we can actually select seats, they put us in a group setting. Uh, so that may be 24 hours before the flight and so on. But what I know that... Um, uh, they usually do uh, literally uh, is, um, you know, I mean, and I'm not going to knock the hustle. They're, they're trying to sell priority seats. So regardless of whenever you bought the tickets, um, if you want a seat, more than likely you'll find a seat that you want and you may be willing to, just to pay for it. So that's all they do. But the same thing KLM do. And it seemed like outside of uh, the bookings that we do in the U.S., um, that's what most airlines internationally do. So that's kind of just go with the flow. All right, on this other segment of uh, flights, uh, it's, this is Monrovia to Casablanca. So these are uh, flight times are weird and <laughs> awkward, but I'm just saying this try to work with it. This is 3.25 in the morning, uh, departure uh, from Monrovia to Casablanca, which you get there 7.30 in the morning. So, uh, you, you know, you get there, we get set in a hotel and uh, we have a, you know, we have a tour bus scheduled there to take you out on a full tour of the day. And uh, we just take you somewhere where you can just select nice uh, lunch and then have a nice place arranged for you to have this, uh, your, you know, your final farewell well, well, dinner in uh, Africa. And then, you know, you make your way back uh, the next day. Uh, so from there on, different people have different uh, flight connection situations. Some people are in the New York area where they just proceed home. And then some people flight leave the next uh, morning. Uh, so by the time you get out the airport, by the time you get uh by the time that flight land, it's gonna be way in the night and then the flights are scheduled for this the first thing early in the morning. Uh so those are things that uh we have set up and again family, this was uh we're trying to plan this itinerary. Um uh and dealing with United Airlines and Brussels, this I mean they were just going crazy. Like like some sometimes they was even talking about three thousand dollars for the flight. So the best sequence we're going to put together is uh, this sequence. Um, and the times are, you know, it's it's what it is. So, you know, we'll work with it. So hopefully everybody get enough rest before they do this journey. And then just think about it as, you know, you'll get a whole, you know, you'll get more rest when you finish. Uh, it's a nice uh, short uh, journey, um, nine days. So you just use that energy just to adapt and adjust as the time change is different. But uh Get yourself as much rest on the flight as I can say. And um, uh, the first day, the good thing about it, which um, we'll get to as I go back to the overview. The first day, uh, we're going to be at a nice resort. So you can just kind of just relax for that day. And if you just need to catch up with some rest and just enjoy some swimming and just enjoy some this nice lunch and this, that's a perfect time. So that's one of the things that we have arranged. So we're hoping that uh, by the time you just enjoy 
that uh, day for relaxing and, and a few people want to go out and do certain things uh, that's absolutely fine but that's going to be the perfect time so we're going to get to that on the itinerary so the tours includes uh, transportation and tours throughout Liberia and um, Morocco. Uh, looking for anyone who want to do um, volunteer for daily exercise or meditation sessions. Uh, all the tours uh, include continental breakfast and gourmet dinner. And uh, we talk about uh, all the resorts that we talk about. Uh, for the most part, uh, you're looking at uh, three, four star resort and let's give you a nice feel, nice relaxation. And all the room situations are have been arranged. So. Everyone know the situation as far as rooming already, and it has been uh, submitted. Uh, we have a business and investment conference, and that's going to be at Syncor Palace, and that's going to be on April 5th, and that's going to be a four-hour conference uh, slash um, uh, banquet, and uh, a whole lot of networking, and then later on, we're just going to enjoy uh, social nightlife. So all entrance... Uh, Activity sites, activities, all uh, is all included, including, including the business conference uh, for all of our tour members. So what's not included is uh, lunch, uh, group tips of $100 per person. And um, it shouldn't be any camera camp quota fees, but basically saying that anything outside of what's um, included, um, if you go to a site um, outside of entrance fee, uh, you know, it's up to the individual. And uh, the library visa, which um, we closed out um uh, not included, so everybody took care of that, so we're clear on those things. And this is our seven-day tour highlight um, uh, in Liberia. So I'm going to go through this. Um, that way we can skip this going through the day-to-day -day itinerary since we talk about the flights, uh, which is the most important part of the itinerary. That's basically showing us how we get into the country and also how we leave in the country. So in between, uh, and this uh, may not exactly be in order, but... Um, I think I did make some adjustment to make it in order. So I'll go through some of the highlights. So one of the things uh, we're going to do when we first uh, get to the country is the uh, main thing is going to be in a resort. So you may have this limited amount of tours. Uh, so the main thing, once we get to um, Kandesia Resort, uh, you're literally going to just be able to just do the full-fledged uh, journey. of. So what I'm going to do even better yet, let me actually go through the itinerary. That way just give you a flow of what we're going to exactly do. And then for everyone, you're going to see the link. Uh, there isn't, um, and I'll double check a uh, link for Nano Lodge, but these are all the exquisite res uh, resort and hotels that we're staying at. Just, you know, we made sure we you know we, we definitely pick some of the best locations for you just to enjoy paradise. All right, so all these things are best viewed on the itinerary. Uh, so the main thing I wanted to cover is uh, what's included and what's uh, not included. And the um, basically the uh, the Casablanca highlight is, is still two days because when you get out in the morning, you you you're basically out there first thing in the morning in Casablanca both times, and you're just gonna enjoy the tour for the day. Only difference is one that one one day you're overnighting, and then you're getting back to New York. All right, so I click on the link. And then we look for itinerary. All right, so we talk about uh, day one, uh, the meetup, and day two, um, and the flight connection to our Casa Blanca. Uh, day three, uh, uh, welcome to Tropical Paradise at La Bassa Echo Lodge Resort. So there we have the link right there. So anybody want to check it out, check it out. And then... We do have a short uh, tour and lunch at uh, Kokan Eco Lodge and Nature Reserve, Reserve. But the main thing I'm saying is like, if you're coming in, you burn out, you're tired, and you need that whole day to rest, uh, it's all good. Uh, but uh, for how we just operate and have schedules, like I'm, I'm looking to enjoy the, just the, the enjoy the night, uh, the day, just enjoy all of library as much as possible. So I get some rest when I get back. Uh, but um, Use that time to just get that relaxed so you just get your body in, in flows. Uh, so once we are enjoy that Echo um, Lodge uh, tour, we're going to just head back to the resort and just enjoy just a nice welcome dinner and just enjoy this cultural buffet and you know, music and just enjoy paradise. Uh, the next day, uh, day four, we're going to check out and uh, we're going to take a circle cultural journey to Edina City in District um, 1 of uh, Grand Bassa County.
Uh, so we need to talk more about that. That was a great suggestion, which was uh, great to just include a nice cultural his historical part of uh, Liberia outside of uh, Monrovia. Uh, so we're going to enjoy a nice lunch and um, beautiful beach paradise at Sunset Beach. Then we're going to depart from Gambasa and then we're going to check into RLJ Kenanja Resort and Villa uh, for dinner and overnight. So this is where we're going to be at uh, for three nights. Uh, so the first night we get them just relax, chill, enjoy, and we just make sure we have you know, nice social activities. And then definitely um, once we enjoy a nice buffet and relax, um, for those who want to just enjoy one of Kala Genesis' favorite place, the Kalabash, you know, we just head there and just uh, enjoy the energy. So not all these things that, you know, because when you plan a nightlife and dinner, you know, it's not, you know, sometimes you have to just make the decision maybe a few days before. Uh, so we put as many things as possible in the itinerary. But uh, we do have a few. That's why we generalized uh, nightlife. But we have a few incredible places that, you know, want as many people to come out and just enjoy the social nightlife energy. All right, uh, day five, roots and culture tours uh, and shopping. Uh, so we're going to enjoy a nice historical uh, tour uh, there in uh, Monrovia. And some of these are just uh, quick places we're going to drive through and uh, enjoy some shopping and also enjoy a great uh, lunch and uh, make our way back to the resort um, you know, more than likely early. And uh, the next day, Wednesday, April 3rd, that's going to be our city tour and our repatriation settlement uh, for stolen African uh, Africans. So I ordered our Africa for Africans t-shirt, uh, which is blue with a red logo and white writing um, uh, for Liberia. Um, and... This is a nice historical day to uh, wear the t-shirts and do group photos and just have a social energy. So that order has been put in. So once we get to Liberia and I get the luggage, um, I'll give everybody those t-shirts and we just explain the situation as far as um, what we're doing. So I even have it right here on the itinerary. Um, uh, dress in your Africa for Africans t-shirt for our Pan-African tribute to our ancestors. 9 a.m. Uh, departure to Providence Island. The 1822 settlements for Seoul Africans or Pan-African repatriates, uh, Bushrod Island is next, uh, Freeport of Monrovia. So some of these places that we, you know, it's a drive through and the tour guide is going to talk about the, the history and the connection. Uh, we, as Colin Winnie talk about, uh, you know, very historical country, especially dealing with uh, the African diaspora and that connection. So uh, we'll hear more as we, as we get to different sites and then it will all add up. And that's part of what we're just experiencing in Liberia to this make our way around and just put things in perspective. And, uh, and uh, we're going to make our way to uh, Joseph uh, Jenkins Robert Monument, the first president of Liberia. So that is going to be a nice presentation. And looking forward to the guy just breaking out a presentation. And also you'll be able to see uh, the Ducor Hotel. I'm not sure if we're going to go there. The tour guide is going to talk about it. But uh, that's another part of the city along with our, the Capitol Hill uh, University. And you're just going to see... Uh, Liberia, um, right there in the, the city center. Then you have the Liberian National Museum. So all of this is a part of the uh, the two-day in Monrovia. And instead of making it just one journey, looking just to take our time and also just relax and enjoy our lunch and not rush our lunch. And also literally just uh, spend more time to seeing the, the parts of the city that, um, you know, that you know we want to show people this... The, the the beauty of Liberia and there's parts of the city that you know that doesn't always get shown. So definitely look into this. Um, make those two days special, and we have a we have additional uh, tour guide that's gonna come in, and he specializes in doing uh, Monrovia tours. So he's gonna be doing that um, special tour. So looking forward to this. The different people that's gonna be sharing the history of Liberia. And as uh we uh scroll down and we close out of um uh, Kenaja um. The next day, we're going to head to Robert's Sport in our Grand Cape Mount uh, or Grand Cape Mount County. So we're staying at uh, Nana Lodge, and I'm going to put this um, link over there on the overview. Uh, so another place for us to relax and just enjoy the coast and enjoy this a beautiful breakfast, beautiful uh, dinner, and just great time for our group to socialize, place cards, uh, dominoes, and just enjoy the scenery, just enjoy the life. And just um, 
enjoy our relaxation, our holiday day, whichever way you want to look at it. So uh, this uh, journey is just laid, laid out to where you just, it's more laid back and you just more enjoying paradise because that's one of the things that we look back in the past that, you know, a lot of times we go to these beautiful places, but we just never in the hotel and never, you know, because we're out touring. So this is that great adjustment. Uh, day five, uh, you know, we're going to check out in the um, late um, morning. Um, after after we enjoy a great breakfast and visit the Gola Gichi slash Gola Kisi village there. Uh, so it's another historical part of the tour where you just be connected to the history of uh, and culture of Liberia. So once we uh, depart uh, Robertsport, uh, our goal is to uh, just uh, get to Sinkor Palace and check in and then get ready for the repatriation of in investment and business conference uh, banquet at uh, Sinkor Palace. Uh, so you're going to be looking to meet with this, you know, different people. It's a private uh, session. And I hope a whole bunch of people don't just bum rush it. And, you know, because, you know, when, once you have your fly out and you put it out, you have other people that sending it out and things like that. And next thing you know, people, you know, I want people to think a bunch of group of rich black folks in America coming and they're looking to invest all over Liberia and they're going to make everybody rich. You know what I mean? So I've been already just trying to just, you know, get in the flow of letting people know, hey, you know, we're coming for educational purpose. And that educational information will be shared along, you know, on the internet, shared along with other people. And, you know, we can build for the future. All right, so that is the link also for Sinkor Palace. And then we have a free day in Monrovia. So, you know, you get a chance to just, once again, just uh, enjoy this uh, beautiful hotel. And you're in an incredible part of the, um, the country. So um, we have... Uh, an incredible farewell dinner um, right there at the Kalabash. Uh, so looking to just enjoy that. And unfortunately, say our farewells as we get, we have to go back and pack up and then take one of these uh, strange flights where you have to, yes, it's it does say 3.15 in the morning. Uh, so uh, just you know, process that itinerary and just get your mind ready. Uh, it's um, it's something where, you know, when you do these uh, journeys, you're at the mercy to whatever schedule uh, these airlines create. And in this case, this is the schedule they created. Uh, very different, but um, a lot of early mornings, uh, which I've never really seen before, you know. But that's what they have set up. And in the future, they're looking to expand their brand, Royal Amarok. But I realize that's one of the shortest, smoothest way to get to Africa um, without having to go to Europe and things like that. All right, so proceeding... Um, we're going to close out um, in Liberia and um, proceed to uh, Casablanca and then from Casablanca proceed back to New York. So that is the flow of our itinerary. And um, I'm going to stop and you know, I can share some more, but definitely want to open things up to those who haven't had a chance to speak and introduce themselves. And then you can also reach out to see if you have any and. Also, if you have any questions, it's um you know reach out based on what I talk about it on the itinerary, and I was trying not to just uh, take too long on it. And then as far as the preparation details, the list is on there. So uh, if we have chance, we'll go through it. But definitely want everyone to look through it and to talk about all the things that you need to pack and bring. So yes, uh, Teresa, greetings, my sister. How are you? Greetings, Bumani. I was on the road when you were trying to get me to talk. Of course, I had to support our students at the university. So whenever they have an event, I go to it to su support them. So got to stay with my people. Okay, so um, yes, I'll be going to Liberia and Morocco. This is not my first trip to Africa. Um, it's more like the 12th or so. <laughs> My first trip was to Ethiopia because, as Mr. Genesis said, the only two free countries was Ethiopia and Liberia. But Marcus Garvey, yes, he went to Liberia. That's true. But um, being that Haile Selassie in 1914 or so, in the 1900s, he went to the UN and he said to these people that the only way Africa was going to unite is if everybody came together. So I still have a lot of reverence to Ethiopia, 
Liberia's okay. So I have open minded and I would love to see what the Garbiites did in Liberia. It should be interesting. So I look forward to learning as much as I can. Well, tell us what you uh, know about uh, Liberia. Um, you mentioned about um, either you study or you, uh, you, you mentioned about, uh, you know, your educational background. So well, you know, I, I know about, you know, that their flag was because of the um, the 11 white people that <laughs> helped them in the, uh, the Back to Africa movement. Uh, Moreau was the president at the time that's, and had funding. That's why it's called Morobia. Um, but actually, the way I heard, they actually became totally on their own in, 18, in 1847. But the sister was saying 1821. So I'm going to have to check that into that because I know was, they... Uh... they or 1847 uh, as a like a um, commonwealth type of something like Puerto Rico then they, they exist but they don't exist type of thing so I I, I want to know more about that well let me break it down so let me give you an overview it was actually 1822 where you'll go on Providence Island you'll see that everyone's going to drink from that well that's on Providence Island the first well struck in West Africa. It says 1822 on the marker right there. That's where our ancestors first uh, 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 came there and settled. And also this, uh, the stripes of Liberia. People think Liberia flag has something to do with the American flag. And it absolutely doesn't, right? The, lone, the star in the background means the lone star of Africa. It means they felt like they were alone in a world that was trying to uh, enslave them and impress them. So Liberia is like the lone star in Africa and the world. That means uh, uh, a lone star and 11 stripes means uh, valor or something like that. You know, it had nothing to do with like America. And uh, uh, President Monroe, <clears throat> uh, 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 it's true that he basically supported Liberia because had it not been for President Monroe, Liberia would never happen because remember something, at the time, the slave trade still existed on the high seas, you know? And if you was a black person and tried to sail across the Atlantic or do any voyage without the U.S. Navy support, you would have been captured and put back into slavery. That was, that happened a lot, you know. So uh, the U.S. Navy basically patrol and the British Navy patrolled the coast of uh, that area, uh, 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 hunting down slave ships, and they used uh, Liberia as a place to send recaptured slaves from slave ships, and they basically settled them there. You know, that, that's another hit part of history people don't understand. The recaptured Africans from the Congo, the brighter Basin, the Slave Coast, ended in Liberia, right? And they quickly uh, integrated into Liberia society, you know? So you had two uh, uh, strands of immigrants, right? Uh, you had immigrants coming from the hinterland of Liberia. You had immigrants coming from uh, America. You had immigrants coming from the Caribbean. And then you had the recaptured Africans, right, who were resettled there. So those three groups of people, right, that settled on the coast, right, made up Liberia. People from the hinterland, uh, and, and, and local people from the hinterland, uh, and captured Afri recaptured Africans that were set free in Liberia, uh, African Americans and Canadians, and people from uh, Barbados and the Caribbean and Jamaica, you know. And also, uh, 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 Liberia was there was Liberia and there was Maryland. Maryland was a separate complete separate state than Liberia, right? It developed on its completely on its own. It had nothing to do with Liberia. Uh, it was settled by uh, people, uh, uh, John Brown Rushworm. Uh, he was the first person who graduated from, um, I think, college in America, Bodine College, right? Uh, he was a Jamaican-American, right? He founded the newspaper called the Freedmen's Bureau, right? And then after years of uh, 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 living in Nova Scotia and Maine, uh, and then he went to the D.C. area. He concluded that black people in America will never be free until they have a land and part ways with America, right? And he lost a lot of white friends. And he said, look, you, you told the black people, you're wasting your time. We need to leave this country, you know? And John Brown Westworld settled in Liberia, became, in Maryland, and became his governor, right? And made it a prosperous uh, uh, state. And like, Maryland was the same size as Liberia. And, and to tell you the truth, when you look at Maryland, right, 
And one day, I, I would like to see people do tours of Maryland. Because if you see Maryland, right, and I would say that out of every place on the continent, that was probably one of the most advanced civilizations the world's ever seen. You know, the Maryland in Africa, you know, called Maryland in Africa. But black people that from the uh, Maryland region, the Chesapeake region, settled in that area when they created, like, probably uh, Maryland in, like, uh, uh, the Kavala River uh, region, Hoffman River region. And all those uh, uh, towns and everything they built, I would say surpassed Cape Town and Dur uh, Durban in time on the continent. And so, uh, uh, so and then what happened was in 1857, Maryland merged into uh, uh, Liberia, like in, uh, in Liberia next to territory. And a lot of people didn't want to uh, uh, join the territory; like they wanted to become their own country. But uh, it became uh, part of a uh, um, uh, part of Liberia. In 1857, ten years after independence. Now, uh, the, uh, in 1822, that's when the first people came there and settled, right? And uh, it's true that the American Colonization Society. But the thing is, though, the American Colonization Society basically was ran. Uh, 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 the, the white agents that came there for the most part were racist, right? And they basically were um, uh, treating the 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 the, re the 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 returning Africans as 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 you know, just like children, like, you know, we're going to tell you. Then after a while, when uh, Liberia started attracting really learned men, like J.J. Roberts, right? It had Elijah Johnson. He had uh, all these, uh, Randolph Cooper, all these great men, right? And they realized uh, something, right? That uh, they could actually run the country themselves. And they said the presence of whites in the ACS was exacerbating the tension with them, them and locals. So they started making their own treaties and deals. And, uh, and uh, with the local people and everything. And then after 25 years of them uh, 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 becoming prosperous, actually, that means uh, uh, they knew how to run the mills and stuff like that and, uh, and uh, ship and, and do all these things and everything. And they said to themselves, what do we need the ACS for, right? What do we need the ACS for? So, so even within the first five years, they started saying, you know something, we got to prepare for independence. And men like Hillary Teague and all the people say, look, you know, you know, the ACS uh, neglected us. They don't uh, do what they say they're going to do and stuff like that. So we're left to really defend, defend for ourselves. So so they start saying to themselves, can we can we actually govern ourselves? You know, that was a question for like 20 years. Can we govern ourselves? Do we need the ACS help? Now, initially they did because uh, this, they, uh, the, the threat was the slave trade on the coast, right? But once when they start building their military units up and stuff like that, and they start making treaties and they start stamping out the slave trade on the coast and everything like that, you know, and they start taking control of the co coast, they realize they didn't need the ACS anymore. So that they start preparing for independence, you know, and they didn't get independence from the United States because the United States didn't recognize Liberia. They just declared themselves independence. And the next thing was to do was to get recognition. Right away, Portugal uh, saw what they did and said, that's remarkable. We recognize you as a republic. Uh, the great, uh, the most powerful country in the world, Great Britain, said, okay, you know, you guys are a republic. You guys uh, 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 declared your territory uh, and stuff like that. We're going to recognize your independence. Then France and all these other people. The United States didn't recognize Liberia until 1862 when Lincoln was president. You know, some 12, 13 years after it declared independence, the United States refused to recognize it. Liberia even exists. They said, we have no relationship with the United States. That's on record. We have no relationship with the United States. That was a charitable organization, a private organization, everything like that. So, 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 the United, so since Liberia wasn't bound by the United States sovereignty, they declared themselves independent. So they would, the independence meant, meant that now they could start taxing British traders on this coast. Now we could start basically uh, taxing the ports, you know, where uh, the British and the French and the Portuguese were doing trade on the coast, now they can collect taxes and everything and enjoy all the uh, the benefits of sovereignty. You know, so that's, you know, that's, uh, it, it was a republic. And so, and so you're a republic if you could be recognized as a republic. And when you see Liberia, it's like, it's like, uh, uh, one thing they made sure was when they wrote the constitution that there, no white people could settle there, no white people could own land. And also they protected the indigenous people. The government has to sign off on any sort of concession. I mean, so in other words, you cannot buy indigenous land in Liberia, 
no foreigner could buy indigenous land like because that's how they trick the uh the people in like the Congo and stuff like that. They get them to sign this thing. The next thing you know, oh, you signed this on the dock. Well, we didn't know we were signing. That's how they got Zambia and Zimbabwe. They went up there and they said sign on the dotted line, right? And the, and the people signed their country away uh, and said, yo, you signed us to be uh, part of the British Empire. You know? So Liberia said uh, uh, they kept Europeans away from the indigenous people so they would not be tricked out of their land or stuff like that. And there were many different battles, you know? And so, therefore, uh, it wasn't easy because in the hinterland was some areas where Liberia didn't have control over. The local people were tricked in, uh, and they lost their land. They knew the, when the Berlin Conference happened, right? And so, uh, and Liberia knew that was coming. They said, look, you know, uh, these French here, they're trying to take over your land and these people didn't listen. And a lot of those people, uh, like my friend, great African, I was telling me, he said, look, a lot of those people that sided with the French, right? After they saw how brutal the French and British was in that area, right? A lot of those people came across the border to Liberia. They said, wow, we didn't know what we were doing. You know, and they said, wow, you know, because the French and the British were really brutal in that area like that, but they didn't know that that uh, that they were signing their um, their life away, you know? So Liberia we used to be twice the size of it is right now, but it lost a lot of its territory uh, because, you know, they was, because they were able to come uh, thing. Now, on the coast, an area where Liberia had strongholds, that didn't happen. But in the hinterland, where the French were in places like Mali and uh, French were fighting uh, this uh, uh, war called Samori Torre and everything, uh, they had, uh, the, the Africans were losing their territory uh, to the French because they had military there and stuff like that. And they were encroaching on Liberia. But uh, but when you go to Nimba and, uh, and, the, and the Mano and the Gio people said, you know, we stood with Liberia. So that showed you that the people of Lofa and all these other people, they're very much proud of being Liberia, right? Because they saw what happened to their people on the other side of the border with the French and the British and everything. And the uh, the Galenas and everything. The British took the Galenas uh, to this day and everything in Sierra Leone. And those people are crying to this day and whatnot. What the hell do we do? And everything. Hey, you got, you, you got fooled by the British, you know? So... Yes. Uh, De oh. Definitely unfortunate, uh, brother, uh, but uh, we have to proceed, uh, but definitely appreciate you uh, giving us an introduction of the historical energy of Liberia and how Liberia came together. So family, uh, that's the purpose also, the journey, uh, so you'll be able to hear a lot more um, you know, when we are in the country. But family, we're getting ready uh, to close out. Just want to make sure, this, uh, see if anyone have any questions, uh, just directly for myself, uh, Wayne or Kala. In reference uh, to this uh, Liberia, the tour itinerary, especially that, that I just went through. And then uh, while we're talking, I'm going to just uh, have the screen sharing open to this, even just go over a few last minute things as far as a preparation list. So, go ahead, family. Uh, anybody have any questions uh, for any of us? All right, just unmute yourself when you're ready. And so this is the uh, departure and reminder list. Uh, so that's the uh, tour link uh, that we just went over. Uh, for number one, number two, we talk about the uh, gratuities uh, for the uh, tour to uh, take care of uh, basically all the people that take care of us uh, during the duration of uh, our time in uh, both countries. Uh, three, just want uh, everyone, uh, when you come um, to visit, don't come with a romanticized notion about Liberia slash Africa, or you will be uh, disappointed. Uh, and uh, unnecessarily frustrated. That's one everyone that's to come with an open eye, open mind, and knowing that Liberia is a developing nation and there's much to do, and um, you can be a positive part of the uh, the future, just like you know, sharing your wonderful experience or this documentation. Uh, so that's the uh, energy that we are pushing. Uh, for we talking about the uh, e tickets. So uh, for the most part, um, everyone uh, that's traveling with us, make sure that uh, you go to uh, Royal Air Morocco website. And this uh, print of uh, your you know, flight, uh, your ticket uh, slash uh, itinerary, um, and just bring it with you to the uh, airport. And um, uh, you see the rest of us, and uh, we just all meet up and get things going. And so make sure that you just um, know all the, the rules and regulations as far as baggage and things like that. So all those things are on the site as far as Royal Air Morocco and also on your, you know, your domestic uh, flight, if you have a connection flight. 
uh, five and uh, six. Uh, basically, just make sure all the documents that you have is print, organized, and together. Uh, visas, tickets, things like that, uh, passport, and just have them organized in a um, location where you just have easy access to them so you can just make your way in and out of the airport. I definitely just recommend everyone to survive uh, two, three hours in the flights. Uh, and the connection flights automatically set that way, but also for the people who are just there in New York, just uh, you know, give yourself time to just be physically just at the meetup time, um, you know, even uh, as early as possible. Uh, so it's a good uh, situation so we can just get ourselves organized and socialize amongst each other and just be prepared for that journey. And then our welcome crew will be meeting us uh, for airport pickup that, uh, you know, you know, that uh, next day, once we get there, and it won't, won't be the next day, it'll be the day after when we get to our Liberia. So these are some of the uh, details about the check bags and the carry-on bags, but make sure you go to the inline website to be clear on it. Uh, Kala, go ahead. Uh, uh, so you're saying when I get to Morocco, right, I have to get my baggage. I have to get my baggage, right? Uh, you know, baggage off the plane at, at, uh. in Morocco. And then reload it again? No, you don't have to do it in Morocco. Some of us have connection flights. Uh, example, uh, we, have, uh, we have... Oh, okay. We have a few people leaving from LAX and they're flying on JetBlue. So their flight will just uh, fly to New York. And I don't know what terminal that JetBlue is in, but uh, more than likely it won't be the same. <laughs> in, uh, that's in uh, Royal Morocco. So you're going to have to get your luggage from baggage claim and then uh, you know make your way to the next terminal and uh, recheck your bags. But the Royal Air Morocco flight between Casablanca uh, to Liberia, it's all connected. So your bags only be okay. at your final destination. And uh, also, okay. even, um, like example, uh, once we get to Casablanca, uh, none of us will have access to our check bags, but we can just be, have our carry-on bags and just secure them or take them with us. And then also when we're coming back, we'll definitely have access to our, our, our check bags because uh, we, have, we have a situation where we, we made a flight to where... You know, we're staying in uh, Casablanca for an extra day. So these are all sequences that, you know, the person who was just like, the person who was hosting, the person who's taking care of these things myself, I uh, have to have them organized. But uh, you're a good caller. You're, yours leave directly from uh, Washington, Dallas, and you connect into uh, uh, Casablanca onto Liberia. So I know you're excited about that. Uh, you don't have to go to, you don't have to go to Brussels. You don't have to fly in Brussels Airway, Airways. You, you don't have to deal with that trauma. I'm happy for you, man. So that's what you that's what you flew on the uh, last two times, right? Brussels Air. I thought Kyle was responding to what uh, you was talking about. Okay, that's great. That's great. No, okay. Well, also, let me ask you a question. I, um, I'm asking about the. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm at, I was saying to you, um, your experience on Brussels Air that you don't have to fly to Europe anymore. How was that? Oh, that's great. How was that flight? That's great. Matt, 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 yo, let me tell you something, right? Let me tell you, I'm not trying to be funny or nothing like that, right? You know, but Brussels Air was like the most dusty thing I ever felt in my life, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, really. And, you know, I'm sitting there saying like this, uh, 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 when I was coming back last time, right? You have to sleep in the dang airport, right? Uh, for for the layover, right? And I'm sitting in my seat, I'm laying in the couch, right? You know, I have the four couches all like, you know, in, in, in the table in the middle, right? And I'm saying to myself, okay, you're sleeping right on the couch, right? And it's more an African brother. I was like, bro, I love you. You know, you're my brother and everything like that, right? But bro, why do you got your feet next to my fucking head? I wake up in one night, well, I'm going to smell, what the fuck is that smell one night? My fucking has dusty ass feet next to my fucking head one. I'm like, yeah, Carla, you're serious, brother. I'm trying to do a business call and you're here cursing and going off, brother. I mean, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Excuse my language. Sorry about, sorry about language. But that was just like, but but that was just so miserable. In Brussels, air the food was horrible in the airport. You know, and uh, they gave me a frozen, uh, 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 it was like a ham and uh, uh, croissant when I was frozen. I said. And I said, can you heat this up? And they burnt it, you know, and it was like $13, right? That was some some tea that didn't even taste right and whatnot. And I was like, please get me on the plane and get me the hell out of here, you know? By the time when I was, I was going, I was like, by the time I got to Liberia, I was starved. You know, I was freaking, so I got on a plane, got to be on the plane, but I was freaking starved because the food there, the, the Brussels there was horrible and everything. I said, look, just let me land. Let me get in there and get some food. So I got, 
Isabella had me a nice plate of fish and rice waiting for me in Liberia. That was so good. I was like, thank God, man. That was the worst flight. But I hear now that with this uh, Rock, you got three square meals. Well, I'll do a layover. Three square meals, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner and whatnot, and then get on a plane and everything like that. It's only a six-hour flight, you know. Uh, so I can live with this, you know. So I'm looking forward. I'm enjoying this, you know. Yeah, was, that was a long uh, – the Brussels air, they make you sit in the airport. I don't know why they treat Africans like that, right? And they got it cordoned off so you can't escape. You know, they got you in the one part of the airport, right? It's like they got you on a surveillance. Like, dude, I don't want to escape into a dusty country. You know, I'm like, dude, you know, I, I mean, the mall there is good. Everything like that, but it's so big and everything like that. And, uh, and I was just like, you know, I was like, man, this is what people, I got to go to every time I come here. I said, I'll do it. Just to uh, uh, do it. But I didn't know about rural, really rural Air Morocco. I would have flew on this one. If I would have known about this, I would have, I would have flown on this a long time ago. You know, so you live and you learn. But that's what uh, people uh, uh, fly, you know, Brussels Air, you know. That's because that, at one time that was the only flight going to Africa, Liberia. Yes, brother, I really feel bad for you, man. I really just feel really bad for you uh, that you have to experience that. So, People be thinking that okay, it's a it's a European airline, so it's gonna be an awesome experience. But you're not the first, second, third, or tenth or twentieth person that have told me that. So I did my best, brother. <laughs> <laughs> to avoid Thank that. God. I don't want to do that. Deal with the embarrassment. So I'm just open to giving uh, this airline a chance. The only thing, like I talk about, is the weird hours. <laughs> Other than that, but to get away from this being this, you know, treated a certain way. So. I feel like this would be, you know, this is an African uh, Airlines and it'd be, it would be a better experience. And uh, Wayne, as a matter of fact, if you're still up, I'm not sure if you're gone. Uh, can you share with us your experience on Royal Air Morocco? Because uh, it's new to all of us. Hey, everybody. Yeah, my experience on Royal Air Morocco, to be honest, I loved it. You know, it was a great way for me to see Morocco. Um, I took Royal Air Morocco maybe four times in my life, and it's it experience than, uh, was nice. Is it better than Brussels Air? Uh, I can say they're the same. What in about terms the, of what clean, about the, what about, what about uh, the bad treatment? Uh -huh. The bad treatment. That that Kala just mentioned. Kala, were you making that up, man? <laughs> but uh, so long you're a black man, you're African, right? Isn't that a reggae song? We'll get, you know, People are always jealous of us every, everywhere we go. But for me personally, because I have blue passport, my treatment was different than other uh, other Africans, you know, on the flight. On the flight, is it was not a problem. It's at the airport where you can see yeah. as a Black American, as a Black American, the way they treat Africans at Brussels Airport. Yeah. Um, and the way they treat I Black saw that. Africans. Yeah, you will see it. But when you have a blue passport, I, yeah, I, 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 I almost, I, I almost said something to this one chick. Like, come on, come on, get off the plane. Well, I'm like, oh, girl, who do you think you're talking to? To share my yeah, accent. Yeah, they, have, they, like, have, they have know, no respect. At you know, I said, who do you think you're talking to? You know, you know, come over and here then, and whatnot. They make sure yeah. you don't, you don't go a certain way. You can't go here. They got it so that the way, you, like, the way like, they talk think, to you. They think we're gonna escape into their country and. uh Seek asylum or something. What the heck? You know, I don't want to go to your dusty ass country. Uh, <laughs> Belgium is like the most rusty country in the world. You know, it has nothing. You know, history of Belgium, they only have their own language, right? It was just a country thrown together by during the Habsburgs, you know, empire. You know, you know, it speak is half speak French, half speak Dutch. You know, and King Leopold was a derelict. You know, and so the, you know, you act like you all that, you, you, you all that. I don't want to come to your rusty country. You know, uh, and then so the same thing that I witnessed at the Belgian airport, I witnessed the same thing with other, you know, darker skinned Africans at the Moroccan airport. Of course, you guys are from America, so they will treat you guys, they will welcome you guys. But the way they treat like the blue black Africans, like the ones coming from Senegal and Sudan, is quite obvious. It's not the same. They will cater to the black Americans. 
Just being honest. Hello? It's a real sad situation. It's a real sad situation. Then, my first time going there, right, I had this one guy. He had a brown passport. I guess that's uh, Sierra Leone, right? <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, brown or burgundy? <laughs> Uh, it was brown. What's the, what's the brown oh, okay. passport? I don't know. I know brown. Brown. It, was, brown. it was it was a brown. It looked like a brown to me, right? So anyway, he was basically uh just saying how stupid Africans are. When I, you know, I'm like looking, I'm like, oh, Africans are so stupid. They don't listen. That's why they treat us like this. They don't. They don't listen. You don't listen. I'm looking at this guy like, uh, uh, he just kept going off about. Yeah, that's why. Like he's talking down on his own people in front of the yeah, white. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. That was just yeah. that was just really. I was like, man, that's why they treat us like this because we don't listen and whatnot. I said these people pay for an airline just like anybody else. Obviously, they can afford a plane. They should have some sort of respect, right? You know, they're not flying for free. You know, so you you treat people with respect, you know. And I was like, this is unacceptable. You know, African like this. Well, sometimes maybe they, the the wasn't clear. They said go this way, no, go this way and whatnot. And uh, because the people ain't jumping fast enough, uh, uh, going here, we had to go downstairs, upstairs, over here, through here, all the stuff like that. You know, and you know because the people like we weren't in like perfect order like he thought it was. Uh, Africans are just stupid and whatnot. We don't listen. I'm like, why would you say something like that? You know? Yeah, and, and everybody uh, sat there just, is, sat there and just uh, took it. But, you know, we have to move on from it. So hopefully um, everyone have the best experience. And I feel unfortunate for some people who just, uh, I don't know how much they can tell the difference from one person to the next. Well, I guess based on accents and ultimately passports. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, before we close out, just trying to get some feedback from Wayne about Casablanca. If you can share with us any information uh, as far as uh, Casablanca, what to look forward to, since I think you're the only one that's uh, been there. And then um, us leaving the airport and getting in the country and things like that? Okay, for me, um, the first time I went to Casablanca, it was quite different because I didn't know what to expect. But as I started going, taking that route, I started to know and learn that when you reach, um, when you come from America and you first land in Casablanca, you do have that option of getting your suitcases out from the airport. So it's something that you want to talk to on the air, uh, the 1-800 airline number before the trip if you want to take your suitcase or leave your suitcase. I mean, ultimately, what you have to do um, to make sure everyone, everyone is clear, if you need to make special arrangements, you do it at the uh, check-in counter. That way they're clear on what to do with your bag. So that's the easiest way to fix it. Yeah. That, that, that line and calling them folks is just uh, stressful. And things like that. So the good thing is we'll be all there early ahead of time to be able to work out many things. Mm -hmm. But I'll uh, continue though. Uh, yeah. And then they do offer complimentary hotels. So I don't know if you guys would do that or get your own hotel. Uh, uh, we'd, we'd have to go. Experience. We'd have to go with a complimentary. Uh -huh. But then the goal is to just have the tour guide come get us and show us around. So some people may just want to check in and relax. And then before so there's two complimentary hotels, one in the city and then one by the airport. The airport one is probably the most uh reasonable one. Okay, you can just come back, get your stuff, and just check in. Um, either way, you still have to get the transportation. The transportation will come and get you from either or either hotel. So it's up to you. You want to be in a city or you want to be in the middle of nowhere near the airport. Oh no, we're gonna definitely do the airport. Uh, we just have to this um uh, find out the exact location to get it all set up ahead of time because trying to get everything this organized ahead of time, especially for that since that's the first thing we're gonna do. Yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, pre so when it's, it's, a, it's a nice country to explore. Uh, they have the the biggest mall in Africa, so you will have enough time if you want to go there. But I don't see. Maybe you want to buy some Moroccan clothes. I love their dresses. Each time I go there, I always buy the dresses. The caftans or what is it called? I think in Senegal it's called boo-boo. In Liberia, we call it gown. The type of the dress that ladies wear. Caftan. Hello? 
Yeah, I don't know if I even know the name, to be honest with you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think, but... Uh, but you know the dress I'm talking about, you know, like these nice yeah. ribbon type... Nice, nice cultural dress. Yeah. So that's what I do when I go to Morocco and I eat. I love their lamb. I'll try to look for pictures then send it to the group chat on WhatsApp. Like, how to just lay the food out. It's so delicious. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. This I'm a, like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big food, so pl please share anything that you like to share with that experience. Uh huh. And um, what I'm doing is uh closing out on this departure list. So while we're talking, uh, let me know if uh you want to recommend anything for people to to bring and things like that, because that's what we have. Um, looking for everyone to also just bring them a nice set of red, black, green, and gold. And if nothing else, the Africa for Africans T-shirt will will be you know we can use. We're trying to just um, use one for one day, in, uh, uh -huh. the first day in Monrovia on tour, and one for the next day. Uh, but uh, we literally just can just finalize that. But that's what we just recommend on the list. But for sure, when we go to Providence Island, the goal is for you to wear the Africa of the Africans T-shirt and okay. you know, build that energy. Uh, Twelve. Uh, any school supplies? Uh, bring it. Um, sure. When you have a nice school or places that we can donate whatever we bring financial donations and show love uh black dolls um any toys for boys things like that um uh, and 13 um I, I have a lot of schools that i donate to in Monrovia and in Buchanan. uh we just so, need uh one trying to make a you know make a move you know we can just work it out while we on and that's another thing too. Like on those two days we're in Monrovia, we just can kind of work out whatever we need to do more on one day. It doesn't have to go in sequence. It just wanted to create mm -hmm. two days where we can just make certain movements. But I'm gonna go through this list uh, real quick. Uh, let me see what else. Uh, we talked about a meetup at seven o'clock. Uh, so all flights, everyone just get there by seven o'clock so we can meet up and connect. Uh, get you some. Um, you know, make sure you get you some you know, nice dinner before you get on the flight because I have no idea what they're gonna offer. But I am gonna. Do my best to just make sure I find out how we can select meals if we need to select meals. So I'm not having any success there. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, there sometimes uh their eight hundred number is just a terrible situation. We but nevertheless, uh, my goal is to just work out anything that uh anyone just need me to work out at the airlines. And if nothing else, we just have to. I know we can't do meals too late, but if nothing else, like the seats and things, we just have to do it when we get there. Uh, when we actually check in and uh, proceeding, so we're definitely um, you know, keep out for the communication on WhatsApp, so we can just communicate about certain things that you know we you know we need to update you on on our WhatsApp. So definitely, just pay attention to the feed, and especially just from here on out going. And even when you're in the country, you can always connect to the Wi-Fi and then call one of us. Um, and just you know, keep in communication uh as we flow with the text. Anybody's Later on a flight or they miss a flight and need to uh, for us to get another pickup or something. All those things are great to just communicate uh, regardless of the situation on the group chat so we can all be alert and know what's going on. So it's more relevant now than ever. Uh, let me just uh, breeze through um, uh, 14. Bring any necessary medicine that uh, you may need. Uh, 15 cameras, camcorders. Uh, bring extra. This, bring all your extra equipment that you need. Uh, make sure you bring, uh, you know, if you just, you may not be there long enough to just want to just use the the networking library to where you just uh, have to bring an unlock phone, but that's what they usually just recommend for people who just want a local number. Uh, or you can just buy a phone there. Uh, but definitely I want everyone to uh, bring um, uh, converters and foreign adapters and extension cords uh, so you can just connect what you need to um connect uh, that way you just uh, you're prepared so all these things you can just order online so uh, these are just all things that you know throughout the last uh, two weeks you want to process uh, travel iron uh, 16 travel iron alarm clock plastic bags compact umbrella waterproof poncho and just any convenient accessories uh, so these are also general lists for this different uh, countries also for this any tropical countries that we travel to uh, 17, uh, mosquito sprays or repellent uh, or centronella oil uh, or just anything that um, can just dispel mosquito. I know that some of these um, sprays are dangerous, so make sure you just get something uh, best as possible. Uh, 18, um, calculator, which uh, you know you use your phone and things for uh, Liberian Exchange. Um, 
that was last updated for a while, so I don't know if it's current, but um, the U.S. dollar is used, so um, our host can, can just, uh, later on just explain to us um, um, how the exchange of money work, if we ever need to exchange money or not exchange money. Uh, so once I just clear the list, I just get everything open up. I recommend everyone just bring uh, big bills so you can just have this less chunk of money, but uh, in this case, I don't know if it's a difference in this, because you're not exchanging money now. Uh, you're just keeping U.S. dollars and using it in the country. Uh, 20 hour, uh, the weather, Um, you know, we're looking at tropical weather, so this, you know, we're, we're in a tropical resort, so beaches, swimming pools, uh, just make yourself comfortable. We're going around cities, we're doing adventurous things, so just bring all the, we're going to business conference, so bring your flexible variety of just uh, things that you'd wear on your ultimate getaway. Uh, 21, just uh, limit um, your kind of photos and recording in people's face or government buildings and things like that. Just, you know, try to just be easy with it. And I uh, host, uh, once we just close out on this list, they can just share more about uh, these things with us. But this is the final list I just want to go through and just recommend everyone just take their time and look through these lists and look through the information that we have online, schedules and details so you can be clear on it. And then give us the, the next two weeks to work on what we need to work on. And we just uh, do our uh, meetup. But the most important thing, once again, uh, all the communication will be in WhatsApp. If you need to call me for anything, reach out to me, text me um, while I'm moving around. getting Well, I need to get wrapped up so I can enjoy the journey with you. Um, I'm available to communicate, uh, especially if it's something important. Just, uh, uh, if you don't get me, text me and just, uh, let me know. And then um, I'll let you know. I'll just connect back with you on my next um Time I can just connect with you. Uh, twenty three. Uh, toiletries, including uh tissues. Um, you have different uh things that you may need. Uh, beach towels and so on. Uh, twenty four. Definitely want um this uh and this is just um countries in general. Definitely want everyone to just understand that um uh, people are very friendly, but however, beware with people who just want to make quick money off you and make promises they cannot keep. Uh, you should know as much as possible about people you are planning to do business with. So that's something that we always have on these preparation lists. And um, that's what I tell everybody, just reach through these important things. But that's a big deal and a big situation. And it just went left for some people who just, you know, didn't follow our advice in the business conferences that we did, uh, which is all for their education, and also didn't follow the things that we have on here as far, as far as guidelines. But uh, for the record, we always let people know that uh, these are things that we cover and things like that. Uh, and uh, we don't want anyone to blame us that we didn't give them the best advice to keep themselves safe and protected from doing whatever they decide to do in any country. Uh, 25, uh, games and leisure, social gathering, deck of cards, dominoes, chess, and general board games. So these are things I'm recommending that you bring and let's socialize and enjoy our time, exec especially when we're at the resorts in the evening and, and things like that. So this is just the ultimate... Uh, get away to this really just enjoy this um you know, a social um relaxation especially if we just get back you know much earlier in the evening or especially if we just have a night where we're not doing much uh 26 uh, emergency items flashlight basic first aid kits uh, laxative pepto bismol um uh, and just a few just anything that you feel that like this may be this um you know emergency or important to bring this you know, be prepared um um, this also sharing with everyone information to just be, uh, you know, a traveler that's uh, ready to make moves and just have what you need while you're traveling and moving. Um, that's that way you're not spending time in the country shopping and getting basic things that you could just get by just ordering it online or just picking it up locally. Uh, twenty seven. The biggest thing I recommend to everyone is please focus on enjoying yourself and accomplishing your mission. Do not get distracted by others or get caught up into complaining. This is an experience that will uh, have its ups and downs. It's a part of your introduction to our library research Africa. We recommend you go with the flow and enjoy your time in paradise around the wonderful itinerary that we have put together on this journey of a lifetime. And 28, uh, there's no other mandatory vaccination or test required to enter Liberia. So um, get vaccinated at your own risk. So uh, yellow fever um, and our host, uh, another thing I just want them to make a note of that they want to cover, they can cover. Uh, I can't legally just recommend certain things, but I do have a yellow fever card and a COVID-19 card because I travel and move around. So whatever 
foolishness that anyone come up with me. I'm, you know, I got a card, so I'll definitely recommend anyone looking to travel to get one. But I wouldn't tell people to just stress themselves out the way they're spending five, six hundred dollars on a card and things like that. So, and if someone can get um, a card and you know, and have a direct question about it, I rather feel that they ask me directly offline to where I, uh, you know, I would explain the situation because the best thing to do. You know, it's just to proceed and keep it simple and not get caught up in anything. So no one is going to deny you from entering a country for not having that. You just have to just talk the right language. But uh, on another note, uh, let me proceed. Uh, so 29, when you get to Baggers Cave and Light Beer, just get your stuff together. And then we'll just make sure that we all have our things together. And then we just, you know, we'll proceed together. And then we'll just meet a welcome party to pick us up. Uh, and 30, bring anything that is going to help you. Make this special moment this a great reconnection. So, family, that's ultimately uh that's the list of things that we have. Um, and so, uh, before we close, I just want to see if anybody have any questions, and if Carla and uh, Winnie want to just uh kind of just elaborate on some of the things that I went through on the uh the itinerary on the preparation list. Uh, be free to open up and share because everything is being recorded, and I'll uh, get this out to the group uh page uh, in the morning. Okay, I I was I want to talk about um uh the yellow fever vaccination card. You know, when I went there, it was like you need a yellow fever vaccination card. So I don't know. Uh, some some people say you don't need it, whatever like that. But I'm gonna find out definitely since I'm coming there like uh, uh almost two weeks before you guys. I'm gonna find out definitely uh the Royal Air Maroc, where like that, stay vaccinated. So we give people time to, if they need to get a yellow fever vaccine, they can get it, you know, so we don't have to go through that, you know, that, that trouble at the airport, you know. I know sometimes, you know, because when I went there last time, they didn't look, they didn't ask for it, but maybe they had me already in the system, whatever, like that, but the first time I went uh, there, Tyler, that, that's not, the, that's not, that's part of the incident, Jeff. It's not a problem, trust me. That one, I can talk to everybody. No, no. You mean a Belgian airport or Liberian airport? Uh, Well, when I went to Belgium, uh no, when I went to uh, um when I was boarding at Dallas, they asked for the uh my yellow fever and my COVID oh, shots, okay. you know. Okay. You know, when I was at Dallas. Because I was saying for Liberia is not for Liberia is not a problem. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's basically, you know, uh, uh the person the person just looked at it and said, Okay, you got it. she didn't read it. She said, so, okay, you got it, you know, and uh and you got your uh, COVID shots there yeah, yeah, whatever, you know, I just carry it, you know. I got my shots, you know, you know, and that was a whole year ago. And I said, yeah, I got COVID shots, whatever, like that. The first time, you know, that was COVID was going on, so I had to get a thing that I was clear uh, to travel, right? Remember, they was making you wait, you know? And then uh, uh, in Liberia, you had to, uh, on going back, you had to take a test before you could board the plane going back. That was a mess, you know, but I still got through it, you know? And uh, the second time I went there, you know, they, I just said, I got this, asked me about my uh, shots. I said, "Do you want some yellow fever card?" He said, "No, that's not necessary." So I don't know. I just don't. I just want to make sure nothing happens. But they the second time. Okay, they now let, people, every, let let everybody get in. You talking about COVID or yellow fever? Well, uh, uh, yellow fever. COVID. Yeah, they probably I, won't ask you for COVID no more. Okay. You know, the yellow fever well, shot uh, vaccination card. Do you got your yellow fever card, Wayne? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. So, that's if, if anybody uh -huh. okay. quits, they can just call one of us. Uh, they they, they <laughs> call me directly, um, and I'll just work it out. They for call Bomani. I'll give Bomani. Uh, I'm money. always telling everyone that um, this uh, I'm not I'm not gonna let anyone travel with me, and then they don't have something, and somebody stop them from entering the country. That's not you know gonna happen. So we just work things okay. out. So that that's that option ultimately. But uh, so if you're gonna be traveling. These are things that uh, you may just be asked to bring in certain countries and submit. So if you can get it, definitely uh, get it. But I'm not going to sanction the situation until people spend four or $500 of the money that, I need, uh, that, that we want you to spend in Liberia for certain things. So that's what I mean by that situation. Right. Well, I'll check it out when I go there. Wait, you're going there too. Let's ask, ask uh, uh, where, where, where are you flying out of, Wayne? Well, uh, you're yeah, flying uh, out of Dallas, right? Sorry, man. Sorry, I had on mute. Yeah, both flying out. Yeah, both flying out of the same place. It's uh, you know, kind of like oh, a week okay. apart. Kind of like a week apart. Dallas. Yeah, I'm flying out of Dallas, right? You know, so okay, me too. I'll ask you, ask you know. Uh, look, okay, we got no people problem. coming. We'll both ask. So, so therefore, and we relay that back to Bamani if there's something that happens 
it shouldn't be a problem, but just want to make absolutely one percent sure. Uh, absolutely, okay, you know? that's, that's, why we, like that's why we have the WhatsApp page. So take photos, take pictures, post on the WhatsApp page. Um, let people know, hey, we're getting prepared for you in Liberia. This is not anything to at this point. Um, I'm, you know, made myself available so we can do the call, but. I'm gonna be literally just working down to the you know the last day before we leave. Literally just to get everything cleared up so we can go and just get everything you know done. Uh, so I can be free from this anything to just stop my time so we can just enjoy the journey. So, um, definitely just want everybody to just uh, be ready to roll and uh, just reach out if they need certain things. But uh, definitely want this uh, to share as much as possible. So, if, uh, you know. Anything that you want to share when you get there? I don't know what y'all going to be doing when you get there. Just, you know, share with us as much as possible, as much as you're free and things like that. Um, and get, the, you know, get the energy ready for everybody. Oh, oh, definitely. So, yes, that was the lot. Yeah, so, Kyle, that's the list right there. Uh, everyone, that's the list right there, the preparation list, as you can see. Um, uh, it takes a long time to go through all these things, uh, but the main thing is that everybody have access to it. Um, and then, you know, the itinerary and those things would be in the book, the tour sites and details, you know, we put together. So that's usually the time we need to just work on those things. So uh, yeah, this is usually the last conference call. I have another one Sunday and we'll go through similar things uh, with other countries also. Uh, but this is, you know, the next time we all meet up and connect is just there in... Um, yeah, they're in Liberia, but uh, for everybody else, uh, they're in JFK. But uh, the WhatsApp is always live, and then we'll start doing a sequence where we just start posting them in introduction. So just uh, putting our all in all in it to where you know the goal is to make it the most special journey ever. And also, I got Dion on here. Dion, I forgot about you. You're so quiet, man. Uh, we never got an introduction from you. Yeah, de uh, definitely, uh, dear. Before we close out, uh, share some, um, you know, connect with us and um, introduce. Yeah, us. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm sorry. Yeah, my son had, um, he was in the playoffs, so we, I was at the basketball game, and then my phone died. So, um, oh. Dion Butcher, um, been going back and forth to Ghana, um, in different parts of Africa since about 2003. I think I've been to Ghana like 16 times, but I stopped counting after 16. Uh, hooked up with Bomani and um, just trying to learn more about Liberia and just other places on the continent and um, that's about it. Yes, brother. So outside of Ghana, um, have you been to another country in Africa uh, or just uh, share some of those experiences? Yeah, I've been to Egypt twice. I've been to Ghana, Togo, Nigeria, South Africa, and somewhere else. Maybe that was it. That was it. I think that was you're it. On the, you're on the move. Let me introduce you to Wayne Wonder right there, Wayne Ahmed. Uh, so, you know, you and I, uh, you know, you always uh, ask me which countries to go to. So, you know, whenever you're ready in the time being, you'll be there directly with her, herself. So, um, you know, if you like it and it, it works out good and, you know, it's just another option as we just go to different countries. So, uh, this would be one that you'd be able to experience. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, you can always, you know, the goal is always to plan future business. So that's uh, one of the great things that we're trying to share with people just online and share people out there that you have a group of us as a people looking to build a future across Africa and network and do a whole lot of things together. And that's what we talk about as far as pan-Africanism and things like that something practical, organized, and this end result, people, opportunities are being created for people. We're making moves and, you know, we're building that global black business pipeline. 100%. Yes, Dion, brother, it'd be good for to see you, man. We're going, yes, sir. Yes, me, sir. Me and Kyle going to get you married before the tour is over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already married, but... um, <laughs> You're for real? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kala, is, is he allowed to have another wife? Uh, who video is this? <laughs> is yours? That's a uh, Wayne's video. What's up, Dion? Wayne, got it. What up, bro? How you feel? This, this, this right. is from 2005 in Casablanca. 
Oh, uh, Wayne, yeah, she adorable. Yeah, sorry, the picture's not clear. It's before digital. Well, digital camera was out, but it wasn't too far. So who's that, Wayne? That's, that's, that's you in front that, of the, the monument? Yeah, King Muhammad, okay, well, King Hassan, Muhammad Hassan V Mosque. I think it's, a, it's the largest mosque in Africa. You should see some of Wayne's little girlfriend. She was so adorable. You know? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's the Hassan Second Mosque. It's the second largest functioning mosque in Africa. Okay, it's the second largest and the 14th largest in the world. That's the place for you guys to go visit. It's really nice. Uh, yeah, that's on the itinerary. Um, uh, oh, okay. All of the, like, the, you know I me, mean? all the historical sites, Um, I, I put them on the, our schedules. Uh, but share some more if you want to share some more. Okay, I'm still looking. Don't show anything. Uh, the call is being recorded, so don't show anything you shouldn't be showing. Oh no, I won't do that. <laughs> hey, I mean, you can show it by accident, and I forget to edit it. Uh, I'm not that type of person. The only accident I'm, 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 looking, I'm looking out, man. Just like this one pop up, something else could pop up. <laughs> and all my pictures rated G or rated E for everybody. So. <laughs> I'm trying to look for the buffet. Oh goodness. But yes, family, uh, while Wayne's looking for that picture, um uh let's uh we're gonna close out shortly. So open up for any questions or anybody wanna share anything or and so on. Um the line is open. Any questions for Carla or Wayne or myself? And beyond that, you know. We'll see everybody March 29th and uh, I'll be in touch on WhatsApp and be in touch by phone and so on. But yeah, go ahead, Wayne. Um, and why are you still looking for pictures? Uh, Kyle, any, any, you have any last words, man? The man of many words. And you have any last words? <laughs> I just want to say I'm looking forward to uh, meeting everybody and seeing everybody on this tour. I'm going to do everything I can to uh, uh, make sure uh, everyone's happy and uh and like I said, you're gonna come away with a uh, a different perspective of Liberia. Like I said, Liberia, it's Liberia against the world, right? You know, it's like the nobody wants us to embrace this country. You know, embracing this country is is not not saying <clears throat> that you can't embrace all these other countries, Ghana, Nigeria, and other. But you look at the unique history of Liberia, that says something about slavery and our quest to be free. You know, and that, that unique history, you know, our ancestors, when you read it, I'm going to read the words of Hillary P. And you're going to feel what our ancestors felt, why they came to Liberia, why they had to uh, do this, why it was necessary that they have a, a, a free land for themselves and people. And so uh, uh, Liberia is the only country that was really set up for Black people from uh, uh, the West and uh, the diaspora to settle and everything like that because it had uh, us in mind because we're always going to yearn to know what it's like to live in a black society that was created with them in mind. It does not mean you can go to any other black country and everything, but you. This is a country specifically had <clears throat> had us in mind when they when it was founded. You know, the slave, the the press, and people that were. Uh, enslaved by white people and, and, and denied their basic humanity. And so, uh, uh, and, and hope someplace where you could be yourself and be equal as any other person that walked the earth. Because uh, the way the world was created, right? The white man poisoned the whole world against us, you know? So therefore, the, the plague of slavery was around the world. No matter, nowhere in the world was black people safe, you know? Anywhere you went, you could be taken back into slavery, killed, uh, no justice or anything. But this is one place where you uh, uh, could live and have sanctuary and have safety and peace. Uh, uh, and, and the land and the laws and everything protected you. So we have to basically, we cannot be dismissive of that. You know, we cannot be dismissive of that. We have to honor that. You know, it's our duty to honor that. Our ancestors are looking down on us. Say, yeah, we have to honor that. It does not mean that you neglect any other part of Africa. You may love Cameroon. You may love uh, uh, Chad. You may love Nigeria and everything. 
But Liberia is a special place, I believe, for Black people from the African American and the, and the Caribbean and places like this because it was a country that basically was the only country that was founded with us in mind, you know, and, and, and our experience. A constitution is written by a people's experience. You look at the French constitution, right? They were overthrowing the monarchs, right? That's what the French have in common. The American Revolution was they would overthrow the British, you know? And so, therefore, you know, every country has a constitution, has a story. Why we the people, you know? And so we look at Liberia, you know, it was like, look, you know, we seek refuge on the shore because of what happened to us in, in the white man's lands. So this is where we come to find things. So, therefore, that's something unique to us, you know, unique to us. At the same time, you can embrace South Africa. You can embrace Tanzania. You can embrace all these other countries and everything. You can live in any part of Africa, any part of the world. But this is one special place, you know, and we have to basically uh, give some sort of respect to that and honor that. Yes, Kala, perfect, man. That was a Perfect closeout. So, family, I hope uh, you know you know you're learning a lot more about Liberia, and then you know it will come more together. So, appreciate the you know the historical connection and the energy, uh, Kala. You know you doing you done well, brother. And then uh, you know my sister Wayne, appreciate your energy and um, your organization efforts. Uh, and we're gonna make this work. So, uh, in the next uh, two weeks, I'll be focusing on closing out on the book and closing out with uh, any business that we have. Uh, so I'll be on standby. And so let's keep in touch and keep communicating. And before we close out, does anybody have any questions or last words or anything? All right. If not, then we're going to uh, close out. Uh, when okay, one second. I'll shoot a video on the WhatsApp group chat. I don't know how to share on Zoom. The uh, video. Um, we're all on the group chat. So anything that you want to post in general and update us, uh, be free to post. Uh, same thing as you, Carla, and uh, now is the time to just share a lot of things and just get people this energy going. Okay. So, yes, uh, family, I appreciate everyone's uh, energy. And uh, this is another uh, great uh, introduction conference call as we just set the pace and the energy so we can just connect more as a people, work together more as a people, and make our ancestors proud. So, family, the journey of a lifetime continues. And the next great journey of a lifetime we have is Liberia and Morocco, March 29th to April 9th. So we'll see everybody for that meetup and uh, we'll set the journey off. All right. So, everybody, uh, good night and uh, you take care. Good night, man. Peace yeah. and blessings. See you in New York. Peace, yes, family. Peace, everybody. <laughs>